Greetings from Paranormal M, the channel that explores the mystical and the unexplored. Don't miss out on our intriguing narratives. Hit subscribe, turn on notifications, to stay abreast of our latest mind-bending tales. We wish you an otherworldly journey. Dream visitation in the form of a movie. My father passed away from cancer almost 11 years ago. I was in my 20s when he died. Sometimes I'll have dreams of my father, but this one was so different. I felt different in my dream and felt different the following day when I woke up. I was in a small movie theater. There were five to six rows of chairs. I was sitting in the back or the second back row. Other people are coming into the movie theater sit down. My awake self doesn't know these people, or at least I can't recall anyone specific, but my dream self felt comfortable around all these people. The movie starts playing, it's in black and white. It reminds me of a movie that you would see in the 40s or 50s. Suddenly my father appears on the screen in the movie. My dream self is shocked and surprised. My dream self knew that he had recorded this clip of himself before he died. He looked healthy and well. He looked like my dad that I knew before he was diagnosed with cancer. In the movie, he's looking at the camera and audience and says, Hi, the garbage gan. I just wanted to let you know that I love you. My dream self is still in shock and speechless. I remained speechless and all I could do is just wave hello at him at the screen. Other people in the audience remained silent and also started waving at the screen at him. This was all that happened in that segment of the dream that I can recall. I'm tearing up as I'm writing this even though this dream happened a couple of weeks ago. If this wasn't a visitation dream, then I don't know what is. I previously was a skeptic and didn't believe in any sort of afterlife or spirituality. Over time with other experiences I've become spiritual, and I believe that there are certainly things that can happen after we die, but we just don't have the tools or human intellectual capacity to measure it. Situations like my dreams are more proof to me that there is something else going on. Shadow in the Tree Line This might end up being a pretty long story, but I want to be as detailed as possible. I work for my city's water department. My everyday job consists of repairing leaks or doing new installations for businesses and homes. There are two parts to our water department that key to everything running distribution, where I normally work, and production. Production deals with the chemical sides of things. They chlorinate the water and do water sample checks. Production is also responsible for the upkeep of our water well sites and our water storage facilities, like tall water towers you might have in your city. Mowing grass is one of those responsibilities. Both parts of our department are extremely understaffed right now so we sometimes give the production guys a hand with the grass when they need it. A couple of weeks ago, it was my turn, and here's where the weirdness begins. My city's in central Louisiana with a population of about 45,000 people. We're surrounded by wooded area. No matter which way you travel, into or out of town, you're going to see plenty of trees. As such, a lot of our well sites are located out in the boonies. Most of our city trucks are four-wheel drive with mud grips because it needs more often than not to have those. I had four sites to cut that day. I headed out just before sunrise to one at the end of a long dirt road, where, if trouble strikes, your phone better be charged because no one's going to be able to hear you yell for help. Surprisingly, this isn't where my strange encounter took place. The sun was rising as I was approaching my first site and on the road ahead of me stepped out a doe with her two fawns. 
Excitedly, I hurried to snap some pictures. To my surprise, the mama and her babies weren't afraid of the loud rumbling diesel I was driving. The speckled fawns made their way across the path as the mom calmly watched me in the truck. Once the babies were safely across, she looked back the way she came and then joined the little ones in the tree line on the opposite side of the road. I breezed through my mowing, loaded the equipment back onto the trailer, and texted my mom the pictures of the deer as I headed back into town. My mom messaged me back, saying, I've read that deer are an omen of good fortune. Looks like you're going to have a great day. Be safe. I love you. And I did have a great day. I knocked out the next two sites without issue and everything was going smooth. Until I reached the gate of the last place I had to mow. McKeithen's site is the biggest one that we have and it's closer to town. It's about the size of a football field. It's not in the middle of nowhere, but it's on the outskirts of the city. There's normally plenty of traffic that travels the road there, so there's really no feeling of seclusion, even though it's surrounded by thick woods on three sides. I've cut this spot plenty of times, but that day felt different. I pulled the truck through and hopped out to lock the gate behind me. Immediately, I felt like I needed to go back into the truck as quick as possible. I made my way down the driveway to the park near the tower, like I have many times before. But after I parked and killed the truck, everything fell silent and heavy. I don't know how long I sat until I was able to will myself to open the door to get out. Instantly, I felt eyes on me. The feeling was coming from the back of the corner of the field outside of the fence, just in the tree line where the palmetto bushes grow. I calmed my nerves reminded myself that I was surrounded by an eight-foot, inclimbable fence with the gate locked. Yeah, if somebody had a gun, then they could have shot me if they wanted to. But they weren't going to actually get to me. If the barbed wire at the top of the fence didn't get them, a face full of weed-eater string blades would. I jumped on the zero turn and took off mowing, keeping an eye in the back corner during every pass. After about two hours, I took multiple runs due to the overgrowth, I had the entire front mowed and it was time to hit the back by the creepy corner. I was about to head that way, but the mower blades wouldn't engage. I had to take covers off, pull grass out of the belts, and rip grass out from under the deck. I had to grease the pulleys and do all sorts of troubleshooting. I finally got the blades going and then the gaslight came on. Didn't realize it until later. It felt like something was doing everything it could to keep me from going to that part of the lot. I finally got everything up and running and mowed the back as quick as possible, doing everything I could to keep my sight on that fence. I finally got done and loaded the mower. I still had to do a little bit of weed eating around the area, but when the weed eater wouldn't start, I knew it was time to go. I hadn't had an issue with it all day, but that was the last hint that I needed to get out of there. After pulling out of the gate and locking it behind me, I turned onto the highway to head home, but not before looking at the back corner, one last time. That's when I finally saw it, the unmistakable shadow of a figure standing in the palmettos. It wasn't trying to hide or make itself unseen, it was there. Being at a safe distance from it, I stopped and watched. I moved to the side as if it were bending try to see me better at the road. It had no distinguishing features, no hair, no clothes, just a person-shaped mass. I decided I had to get as far away from there as I could. And though that could have been so close to it for so long and never saw it, it sent chills to my core. I called my mom later that night and told her what had happened. She told me that she did some more reading about seeing the deer and learned that they are also a sign of protection. Some people believe that a deer means that a higher power is watching over you. After my mom told me that, I couldn't help but think, what if I had not seen the deer that morning? Would I have even seen the shadow? Would it have been able to do something to me? Why did it choose to show itself to me? Is it something about me, or is it tied to that part of the woods? 
My mom texted me even later that night. She was sitting out on the back steps of my little hometown when she heard something rustling near her storage shed. She shone her phone light into the dark, and what stands there but a deer. Deer had never come into the backyard before, but that night a large deer stood tall staring back at my mom. She told me she felt like it was there as if to say, It's okay, he's safe, don't worry, we got him. The Green Woman When I was a kid, around seven years old, I think, I spent the whole day at a cousin's house in my old hometown. He lived right in the middle of town, so we could ride our bikes pretty much everywhere. This was back in 98, in a tiny place that I come from. Everybody knows everyone and keeps an eye out for the safety of any kid that they see. When my mom dropped me off at my aunt's house that morning, she gave me some money to be able to go to the corner store for snacks for my cousin and I. After a while, hunger struck, and I took off on my bike to Reed's Grocery. It was the best stock store in town. There were only two stores. Pulling up, I noticed an old maroon-colored car parked outside. Reed's storefront had a store brick wall with about a quarter of the way up, but from the brick up to the roof was all glass. The type of glass that you see through one side, but a mirror on the other. I didn't pay the car too much mind at first. I rode up into the sidewalk and gently rested on the handlebars of my bike against the wall, hopped off my bike, and by force of habit I looked into the store window. In the reflection behind me, in the old maroon car, sat an old lady in the passenger seat. She was dressed in all green, dark green, wearing a beret, and she had one of those crocheted Afghan blankets draped around her shoulders. She looked very, very old. Deep wrinkles covered her face to the point that I couldn't even see her eyes. Her skin had a gray tint to it. She smiled sweetly at me in the mirror, but when I turned around to wave and smile back, she wasn't in the car. Confused, I glanced back at the store window, and I could still see her sitting there in the passenger seat smiling at me. Fight or flight kicked in, and I aborted all thoughts of 3D Doritos and Gatorade and raced off as quick as I could. I didn't even get onto my bike, I just grabbed it by the handlebars and pushed it as I ran as fast as my little legs would go. Looking back, the little old lady really seemed to mean me no harm. Her wrinkled face looked kind, and her smile was warm. But my seven-year-old brain yelled, Ghost! And told me to run. When I told my mom about it a few days later, she told me sometimes spirits get stuck or have unfinished business they can't pass on. I remember this encounter fondly these days, though, and wish I could have better reacted to the situation. Maybe I could have helped the green lady somehow. Dining Room Door For just some background information, in my dining room there's a door to the basement. It's a crawl space, and I've always been creeped out by it. Ever since I can remember, I had an unsettling feeling about the room, especially when the lights were off. When I was probably around four or five years old, I remember I was walking past the room to go upstairs to bed. That's when I saw a tall human-like figure. I remember I screamed, fell to the floor, and started crying. I wouldn't move until my dad picked me up and brought me to bed. After this, I would have a recurring dream where I would be standing in the dining room and talking to my mom who would be in the kitchen. The light would go off and I would be violently dragged by something down into the basement. I would never see what would drag me in my dreams. These dreams happened for a while, but they eventually stopped. It would seem that it was just my overactive childish imagination I could think of many explanations for other spooky things that have happened to me in this house, except for the following story. I was ten years old. My mother had ran to the store really quickly, so I was home alone. It was right after school, so I settled down to do my homework at the dining room table with my back to the basement door. I had been working for a while, when all of a sudden, someone loudly whispered my name into my ear. I whipped around because I literally felt the breath on my ear. 
When I turned around, nothing was there. So freaked out that I immediately grabbed my homework and did it in the front porch until my mom came home. To this day, I cannot explain it. It was especially scary to me at the time since it happened in broad daylight, and everything related to the dining room before then has been associated with the dark. Seventeen years later, and the room still makes me feel uneasy. Ghost Cat Experience Two Different People and another short story that may be related. I've been wanting to share this for some time, so here goes. There's two different stories. One is short and may or may not be related to the main story. Since they could be related, I'll include it here instead of a separate post. This took place over a long period of time. Me, a 40-year-old male, got a cat when I was in grade 4. I'm an only child and my mother's a single parent. My cat's name was Clancy. He was my best friend. Not sure if it's relevant to the memory, but Clancy was found at the front step of a shelter that we got him. They believed him to be well, about two at that time. Clancy lived a long life. He was two at the time that we got him, and then he would be 22 when he left this world. Because this took place over such a long period of time, some of the details are a little blurry. I guess the best place to start is with the ghost cat itself. See, Clancy wasn't the ghost cat. Clancy was very much alive, but he apparently had a friend. Not sure if he even knew he had a friend, but he did. So throughout my childhood and into adulthood, I'd always have this strange experience when I slept. As I lay in bed and closed my eyes, I would feel the presence of a cat on my bed slowly walking up toward my head. Every little footstep was felt, the pressure and weight exactly like a cat. Was it Clancy? Nope. I always slept with the door closed, clicked shut. The reason for that is that I liked to sleep in and didn't want to hear my mom get up in the morning. Plus, sleeping with a cat on the bed sucks. It takes all the space and I don't want to roll over on him. I think people might say it must have been our cat, he just didn't really realize. It wasn't. Occasionally my cat would bang on the door to my room and I would let him in or tell him to go away or spray water at him. But not that often. We had him for 20 years, so really he didn't like to come into my room at night very often, once a year or so. The ghost cat would visit every night, though. As soon as the light was off and I was in bed lying, he would jump up onto my bed and walk slowly up toward my head. It was definitely spooky, but not threatening in any way. And it was silent. Having a cat, you know what it feels like to have them walk on your bed when your eyes are closed. Cats make sounds when they jump, and when they walk up to your face, you can hear them purr, and they'll sniff you or lick your face. The ghost cat was silent, though. No jump noise. No purring. No sniffing noise, and no licking. Just the subtle weight of its steps all the way to your head. Many times I was wide awake thinking to myself, Am I crazy? Eventually I just figured it was all in my head and accepted that, well... When I sleep, I would feel what I thought was a cat on my bed. Not just my cat, because he was sleeping in the hall or somewhere else. Oh well. This experience was so gentle and non-threatening that I never talked about it. No need. Since it was just some trick I thought of my mind, maybe it was just playing something on me when I was going to bed. Best comparison, like a freight train landed on my roof. So to set the scene, I was living in a trailer. The park was hit by a horrible tornado years prior. It was really bad. Most of the park was destroyed, and it was so bad the ice company was using their trucks to transport to the morgue because of the amount of losses. It was pretty bare landscape-wise, like zero mature trees or anything. Very flat. Trailers are pretty spaced out, especially since not a ton had moved in for a while after that. So one day, my husband at the time says that he heard the craziest thing that night. That it was so loud and hit the roof, he doesn't know how to describe it. 
but he doesn't know how no one else woke up. It was like probably dreaming him a light sleeper. I'd have heard it. He worked nights and went back to work that next night. About 2 a.m. I'm finally in bed and I was just dozing off when it sounded like something landed on the roof. Mind you, I had two small kids on the other side of the trailer, so the lights in the living room and kitchen were on in case I needed to go check on them because one was only 10 months old. But all of a sudden, whatever it was takes off down the roof. It sounds like a train, like a constant, not like footsteps. And you can hear it moving and getting further away. As it goes to the other end, you can see the lights and things shaking, but not all at once. Only in each room that it's over. Like the kitchen light first, then it stopped in the living room, and then it turns back and comes up the other side. Same thing. Lights shaking, but in reverse order. Then nothing. Like it ran off the roof. Too big to be a raccoon or something. Although I'm not sure how that would have landed like that with no tree or anything around. You would think you would hear something climb up the side, especially right next to where it was laying. I ended up calling my brother to come check things out because I was freaking out. Never in my life heard anything like it. No, it sounds crazy, but I felt nuts. But I was curious about others' opinions. Even logical explanations I haven't thought of. I did Google search years ago, and the only thing that came close in explanation was some weird paranormal creature. Supposedly spotted in Indiana. By the way, this also happened in Indiana. At least for me, it didn't really help. We were surrounded by cornfields everywhere. Give me the creeps. Too many scary movies, I suppose. All I kept picturing was the creepy thing from Jeepers Creepers coming to eat me. In the same trailer, one night laying in bed watching an orb of light travel through the house. Went into the boys' room. Out, then into the next room. Out, into the living room. Gone. I checked everything. Went back to my room into the bathroom. As I was standing at the mirror, it was like a cold hand on my shoulder. I jumped, but... More just startled. Didn't feel scared. It felt like, well, I'm okay, just checking in, kind of a feeling. I think my grandpa was checking in for the second time. The first time I think he did was just nuts. And the second I got my car door, I broke down in tears. Left me this long enough for the moment. Something followed me home. Let me start by saying this story was 100% true. Every time I tell it or think about it, I get goosebumps. I'll spare you some time and avoid the lengthy post of details and hit the key points. A few years back, my son and I visited a historic landmark near our home. It's at Nima Collin Castle in Brownsville, Pennsylvania, to be exact. I personally have had experiences with ghosts in the past, and I wasn't opposed to having an experience at the castle. It was well known that it was quite active. It was featured on My Ghost Story, if you're familiar with the show. For the intro, the tour guide told us about the history of the castle, family that had lived there, the tragedies as well. I'll admit, I forget some of the other details, but I remember her encouraging photos from people on the tour. She mentioned that the possibility of capturing ghosts and mentioned the shadow man that's often photographed. Moving along, we went throughout the castle from the top level to the bottom. There were a few rooms I had feelings in, but no sightings. However, I think they're worth mentioning. Room number one. We were taken to a nursery. It was furnished, and it had been way back, and it was occupied by the original owners. The story was that a child there had lived in the home and passed away suddenly, and her playful spirit remained. I believed it to be true, because prior to the story, I swore I had heard a child laughing. Room number two. This room has large windows and a small bed off to the side. The moment I walked into the room, I imagined a woman laying in that bed, older and slowly fading away. Her deathbed, if you will. The tour guide proceeds to tell us a story about a woman who lived in the room. I had to ask, Ma'am, what's her story? She replied, Well, she passed away in this room. She actually died in that spot right there in her bed. At this point, I'm thinking, okay, I'm in tune with the spirits here, I'm expecting an experience. There were many other rooms, but besides being creepy, I don't have much to say on them, so I'm skipping those details. 
We took several pictures, as everybody does, when you visit a haunted house or a hospital or something. We even had the tour guide take a photo of the two of us. I didn't review any of the photos until going home, as I was mostly concerned with enjoying the tour. When we left, we discussed our time in the car. We exchanged our eerie feelings, confirming this place was indeed haunted, and wishing we had seen something, maybe. That night, my son went to sleep, and my wife and I were laying in bed watching TV. We were discussing the tour, and I heard a man's voice outside of her bedroom window. The window was closed, and it was winter time, but the voice was so loud from screaming I could hear that, You shouldn't be here. Are you out of your mind? I then heard another man yell, There's nothing you can do. I actually became irritated and opened the door of the balcony to go out and tell those men to stop arguing in the middle of the night by my home. I'm telling you guys, when I opened that door to find complete silence out there, and nobody standing around, all of the hair on my body stood up. I knew something was going on. There was no way these men just ran off. I would have seen them. The street was too long both ways, and my house stood alone. I heard arguing, and two seconds later, complete silence. Didn't make sense. My wife was pretty spooked, but I told her no worries, they must have left. So we decided to get some sleep. In the middle of the night, I had an experience that was just insane. I was having a nightmare that a man was attacking my wife and she was so upset and frantic and calling for my help and I was fighting this man off. Now, sure, that we all have nightmares, but here's the kicker. I woke up, but I could move. I was experiencing sleep paralysis. All I could hear was my wife next to me crying and trying to speak, but her voice sounded muffled. So I'm fighting this weight on me and I, so I can try to help her. I finally can move and I kiss her on the forehead and tell her it's okay and that I'm here. Look over the clock, it's 3 a.m. And without missing a beat, she says, I was having a nightmare. This man was attacking me and you fought him off, but when I woke up, my body was stuck and I couldn't move. I could look around the room, but I couldn't speak. I kept yelling for you, but nothing would come out. That right there freaked me out so bad that we both had the same nightmare and experience of the same sleep paralysis. I knew it was something from this place that we visited. Something bad followed me home. I finally got out of bed after talking to my wife, with no intention of going back to sleep. I offered to go get us both some water. I returned to bed and we continued talking until somehow we both drifted back to sleep. The next morning at breakfast we were just silent, still freaked out wondering if this was going to be an ongoing thing. My son comes down to join us, and he says, Mom, when did you leave my room last night? My wife looks at him strange and says, What? I wasn't in your room last night. He kind of laughs and says, Yeah, okay, Mom, you definitely were, because I remember waking up and you laying down in my bed, rubbing my hair and kissing my forehead. It was like 3 a.m. exactly. I felt your hair when I rolled over, and then I went back to sleep. Listen, y'all. When he told us that, I almost lost my mind. So you're telling me the exact same time we were being haunted, something appeared to our son in the form of my wife? Like, listen, I don't understand at all, but to this day, it freaks me out. It's even crazier. Later that day, I looked through the photos I took, and there was a picture of me and my son with a shadow man, super tall in between us. So at this point, I'm like, man, I gotta make this thing go away. My wife kept complaining about weird stuff happening in the house, and I promise you our house would be so dark inside. Even with the blinds open, it seemed like light wouldn't shine in. It got so bad that one day I just got fed up. I was home alone, and I remember yelling like a crazy person, saying, You're not welcome here. Mess with my family. It's not okay. This home's protected by the Lord. <laughs> I had enough at this point. Shortly after this huge weight was lifted off my shoulders and the home, light was shining in as it had prior. It was crazy to me. So there you have it. The craziest experience I could ever have, and I'll never forget it. Until I die, it'll always be with me. I still want to know who it was and why. Doesn't make sense. Dreams affected by spirits. I need advice. I have a problem that started years ago and is escalating. I've always seen things, and I've had paranormal events in my life that I've ignored. We moved into our current house 16 years ago. 
and the events continued but escalated so it ended up where I smudge her home on a regular basis. This keeps things quiet, and I've noticed as the bad dreams start, the corners of the room get darker, so time to smudge again. I know that they affect her dreams, as I had audio recordings from years ago of the spirits affecting my children's dreams. Talking to them, there were two male and two female spirits in the recording and a sound would always come before anything started that I could only describe as Velcro being pulled apart. Recently, things have changed. I'm having dreams where I'm getting attacked within the dream, but when I wake, no bruises are visible. But where I'm injured in the dream, I feel the pains while awake for days later. A problem I can deal with by smudging. This is where it gets tricky, though. I work as a support worker in a one-to-one -one environment within his house, and it's following me there. I've spoken to the company, and I'm not allowed to smudge his home because I'm forcing my belief on him. I smudged my home two days ago, and last night while sleeping I had a dream I was attacked, and I hit back, punched, and kicked a demon from my dream. I was overpowered, and it stood on my hand saying I shouldn't fight back. I woke up, and the foot I had been kicked with was bleeding and the hand that had stood on was swollen badly. I could still sense something was in the room. It's around eight hours later. The swelling is almost gone, but the bones still hurt. Where I sleep, there is nowhere I could have injured myself to that extent. So here's my problem. Can anyone suggest anything I can do to protect myself that would not be classed as forcing my beliefs that I think? While well, I'm purchasing a white sage plant to keep in the staff room where I sleep, but... I didn't know whether that would do anything. I've tried to post things in the past to tell what I've been through, but out of the last 30 years, I've been scratched, had my hair pulled, things thrown at me, burned, and I also have seen things constantly. But every time I start to type it out, I get really sick until I have to stop. Even just typing this, my body started to ache from head to foot. I got a violent migraine. Advice needed, please. I've had issues with the paranormal for over 35 years. It follows me to anywhere I go. Relevant later. I can ignore most things when it's directed toward myself. I hate when it affects my family members. This morning, my two-year-old woke with scratches down the leg. Myself or partner can't really see how... We could have done this to himself, but other than that, seems fine. During the day today, my partner's pupils changed to slits. Only way I can describe is like a cat's eyes. She said she could see fine and couldn't tell the difference. I work in supported living and I'm required to stay 24-hour shifts. I've had a few things happen while at work. One night around five years ago while at work, I had a phone call off from a work colleague who was spooked due to paranormal things happening to him. I was talking to him to calm him down. My wife at the time turned and looked at me and had the same issue with her pupils, but returned to normal shortly after. This was the only time I'd seen it when we were together for 20 years. My partner seen my eyes go black, even the white of my eyes. This was last year and it freaked her out. Then another time my eyes fogged as she was talking to me and she saw me like age in seconds. Aged to the point of being an old man and dying in front of her. Then seconds later return to how I actually look. I was wondering if anybody had any idea what's happening or how I can protect my family. I can provide more info of encounters if needed, but... I said I've had things happen over 35 years, and I've had quite a few encounters over this time. I had an encounter with an old friend. I had an encounter with an old friend years ago, back in 1999. I'm a musician who's been in a few bands back in the day. We had a studio to play and practice in and everything. I was the singer. An old friend, Kevin, came down, filled in for drumming while we were looking for a drummer. He couldn't commit to the band, but was willing to help out. I knew him for years before this. Anyway, we found our drummer and thanked him, and he was on his way. Months go by and we lose the lease in our studio, so the band broke up. 
A few months later, I get a call from a guitar player in a country band. So now I'm playing guitar. Things are looking good. We have a CD and a financial backer who owns the record studios. They also wanted to buy us a bus. Couldn't get any better. Long story short, though, the singer, well, who doesn't drink, gets drunk. He cusses. They wind up cussing out our financial backer. We lose it all. We pack up and head for the Great Lakes. Found a band and started gigging. A year later, I transferred from my job back to Virginia. Every year, there's a band or a jam or a competition here in my hometown. This year, I'll just be watching. So I go to the stage area and listen to one of the bands. I get a push from behind. It's my old buddy, Kevin. He is with a beautiful girl. Never seen her before. Not his wife. They both looked great. He looked better than I'd ever seen him. We chit-chatted a while about music and what I'd been doing. Then he told me he sold his drums and hadn't played that much, which floored me. Then he was like, do you want to get another beer? I said, sure. So we went to the kegs and he poured himself beer and me. We continued to drink and listen to the band. Well, that band finished up. And there was time before the next band started. The perfect time for a bathroom break. When I came back, Kevin was nowhere in sight. So I hung out for a little while longer. It was boring now. For some reason, me, the guy who knows everyone and everything, didn't know anybody there. So I left. Two weeks go by. I went to see some musician friend of mine, a singer friend who married another drummer friend. She asked if I had gone up to the band jam. I said that I did go. She asked if I'd seen anybody that we knew. I said that I'd seen Kevin and that we hung out for a while. But besides that, I had seen no one else. She became infuriated. Bullshit, she kept saying. She was pissed. She didn't even want to hear what I had to say. She told me that Kevin had been dead for almost a year now, and that I was full of shit. I had never been treated like this before by her. She wouldn't let me explain. She said that he was in Florida and stepped out in front of a bus and he was run over and died. Anyway... She was so ticked and being unreasonable that I went home. I did speak with his widow just last year, and she confirmed he did sell his drum kit. I told her the story. She just said, oh, that's interesting. I kind of just left it at that. I don't think she thinks I'm all that sane now. I know what I experienced was real, though. Well, that's my story. Got to hang out with an old friend for about 30 minutes, even though he had passed away. I thought maybe he faked his death. After talking with those that went to his funeral, well, he went into the ground. It happened. I saw and spoke with him, had a beer with an old friend. Ask Reddit I'd been on my old laptop, and I decided it was time to catch him shut-eye. Normally when I close my eyes, I see these red and blue closed-eye hallucinations. They move left to right and disappear pretty fast. When I closed my eyes this time, there were none. Instead, I saw a ring of white light. Then I realized it wasn't a ring of light at all. It was a circular black shape. It was backlit. The image faded like after an image does when you see something murky like two dim lights getting closer and closer. As it got closer, I began to see more definition. They weren't lights, they were reflections off a pair of dark, glossy surfaces that were surrounded by a beige-colored shape. Finally, what came into focus were two large, black, empty, void-like eyes. It was the face of, well, it was the face of what they commonly describe as the gray. I immediately felt terrified and disgusted of this thing. It was right in my face and I wanted to leave or run away from it. I opened my eyes, feeling very uncomfortable. I leaned over and jokingly told the Discord server that I'm in that the aliens might have gotten to me, but I laughed it off. I closed my eyes again and a few minutes later went back to sleep. But I, well, I didn't see the face again, although I can still picture it if I think about it, but Every time I think about it since it happened, I get this uneasy knot in my stomach. I get this... Uh, 
had plenty of horrifying dreams and nightmares. None of them have left me with any kind of lingering tension. Some suggested it might have been sleep paralysis, but I never had the chance to actually fall asleep the first time I closed my eyes. My laptop was right there and open. Hadn't even gone to sleep yet. Didn't feel like it was something happening in the moment. Honestly, it felt more like a memory that had strong negative motion attached to it. Like the afterimage had triggered something I'd forgotten. Knocks at my bedroom door. Earlier this evening, I was on my computer in my bedroom. I heard two or three knocks on my door and the sound of someone trying to turn the doorknob. The door was unlocked, but it sounded like somebody trying to force the knob to turn when it's locked. Didn't think anything of it because my parents were home. I figured it was one of them. I paused my game and paused my movie while telling them to come in and that the door should be unlocked. When the door didn't open and I didn't hear any response, I got up, opened the door myself. No one was there, so I walked further out of my room and looked around. I found my parents upstairs in a separate room. Neither knew anything and would have the knocking. My mom likes to mess with me and my dad, but I feel like I would have heard her if she tried to run back upstairs. I didn't wait that long to get off my computer. I would have easily spotted her if she was going back upstairs in a rush. Finally, she would have either confessed or been smiling the entire time and I confronted her. The previous residents had two people who died at the house. One was an accident and the other was a heart attack, I think. I've experienced one other weird happening, I guess you could call it, while living here, but nothing that blatant. My niece has claimed to have seen shadow people upstairs, but I haven't seen anything like that myself. My Paranormal Experience In the spirit of Halloween, a few years ago my friends and I rented an Airbnb for the weekend. One of the rooms had a bunk bed where my friend and I chose to sleep in the lower level. The first night I wake up around 3 or 3.30 a.m. Now I'm on the bottom bunk, and as my back is facing the door I feel the bed move and my friend getting out of bed. I hear feet go down the metal ladder steps. The bedroom door open and the door to the bathroom close. Thought nothing of it until I continued to hear breathing coming from the top bunk. I immediately become alert. Think maybe this was all in my head as I just woke up. I get up and look to find my friend passed out. The door to our room wide open, which we closed before we went to sleep, and the bathroom door closed with no one inside. I'm a little freaked out, so I decided to go upstairs, watch some videos, since I can't fall back asleep. I didn't want to be down there. All my other friends are passed out, by the way. It's like 5.30 a.m., and I'm tired enough where I'll easily fall back asleep if I tried. So I went downstairs, opened the door, which was not closed when I left. My friend was awake on the top bunk and on his phone, and he jumps up and looks at me in confusion. He asked me how long I've been gone. He said about two hours. His face whitens, and he told me that when he woke up about an hour ago, he heard the door close. Someone walked to the beds and get into the bottom bunk. He's been hearing breathing, right up to the point where I opened the door. The whole time he thought it was me, and he didn't wake me up, so he's just been on the phone the whole time. No one was in the bed, and I didn't tell him my side of the story yet either. Nothing happened the second night, but the day we leave, I decided to do a last-minute check and make sure no one was forgetting anything. I went to the bathroom on the lower level before we leave, and as I go open the door, I hear someone whisper, Did you wash your hands? No one was down there when I opened this door of all my friends that were already outside waiting for me. Felt Presence in Bed Staying in a hotel. Last night, as always, before going to sleep, I check all the door windows. I was laying in the bed, and I heard the sound as if somebody had moved the chair aside. I thought the sound probably came from another room. I believed it because I could see nothing and the lights were on. I played on my phone for a half hour and then turned the lights off. 
twisted, turned to the left side of my bed, fetal sleeping position, closed my eyes. After some time, I felt as if somebody walked inside the room. I could hear bare feet rubbing against the ground and then pressure on the side of the bed. Like a person moved in and climbed on. I just thought it's all in my head and the sound is coming from another room beside me. I was gathering up all the strength in my body to turn and punch if there actually is someone in my room, but at the same time convincing myself that these sounds are from the other room, just like earlier. Before I could make up my mind, I felt that someone grabbed me tightly from behind. I could feel the hands, feet, and the whole body pressuring against my back. I was trying my hardest to turn. I even screamed and asked who it was. I could only hear breath. I applied all my strength to get out of his hold. I could feel it was a male. I couldn't turn my neck. After a few moments of struggle, I felt my neck was free, and then it felt like it was gone. I felt free. I turned my head, and there was nothing. I turned the lights on, googled whatever I was feeling. I was relieved that many others have felt the same. A feeling of pressure. A feeling of presence. F.O.P. I couldn't turn and see the face, but I felt like someone with a dark, demonic-like face was there. I also took God's name when trying my hardest to get this thing off me. It was terrifying. couldn't sleep and felt like I had ten cups of coffee. I slept peacefully after a few hours. couldn't tell if it was real or something in my head because I could feel the touch. It came from a walk, and while walking, I was thinking of the encounter that the same thing was going to happen tonight called up my girlfriend and asked her not to hang up and stay on the call until morning. I don't want to ever experience whatever that was. Something hurt my dog. So when I was around 15 years old, I was sat at home watching TV. After a while, I noticed my dog sat in the corner looking absolutely petrified. Called over to me numerous times, but she didn't want to come near me. Eventually, she started coming closer, but very slowly and still acting scared. As soon as she got within touching distance, I went to stroke her head, and just as my hand was about to touch her, she yelped and went flying halfway across the room as if I just kicked her. As soon as this happened, I felt a cold, hard grip on my wrist that lasted a few seconds before slowly being released. After this, I grabbed the dog, stood in front, waiting for my parents to get home. I lived in the house all my life, and nothing like this ever happened before or after. It's been 20 years now, and I'm still 100% that this happened. It's the only paranormal experience I've ever had, but it stayed with me. My nightly talks with a ghost when I was young. So as the title says, I used to have nightly talks with what I can only assume to be a ghost. I used to stay at my dad's on weekends in a nice house. He rented in a place called Long Ridge in Scotland. I think, honestly, not too sure, but pretty sure that's where the house was. I no longer talk to my dad, so can't really confirm. So anyway... It was a three-story house, and my room was at the top to the left of the stairs on the second floor, where I was able to see the banister in the top step. Every night, this thing would appear and just talk to me. It's kind of yellow, translucent. Its head looked like a lemon on its side, like Stewie Griffin's head on its side. Huge eyes. I called him the Lemon Man. However, I can't remember many or any of the conversations, but I do remember it being friendly. We had chatted every night and it kept me calm. It was my friend. It told me to never tell anybody about it or he wouldn't come back. I know that sounds very cliche, but it's really what happened. One day I brought it up to my dad and his girlfriend. My dad never believed in that kind of thing, but he told me later that it scared him out of the house. Probably not really why we moved out. He was terrible at keeping jobs and with money. After I told him, he said I shouldn't speak to it anymore. Though we did still stay there a good while after. Never ever seen the Lemon Man again. I was really upset about it. Possible Paranormal Activity 
I'm a 45-year-old male living in a small house that we rent with my fiancé and daughter. Never in my life have I experienced anything ghostly or paranormal until recently. Although I have dealt with sleep paralysis and nightmares of spirits and unseen demonic things all my life. First thing I noticed that really had me thinking was about eight months ago. My daughter's picture in the living room had fallen down. I asked my fiancé about it. She said it may have fallen when we were walking through the house. Well, the only thing is, it was face down. It was a standing picture that leans back, so no way it could have fallen forward. Then today happens. First odd thing I noticed was when I went to the bathroom and I heard a very quiet dinging sound, similar to a bell. I walk out of the bathroom trying to listen where it's coming from, only for it to fade out before I find the source. Then, about 10 minutes later, I was sitting on the couch, about 9 or 10 a.m., getting ready to play my PS5. All of a sudden, I hear what sounds like a ping-pong ball being thrown and bouncing through the hallway. It's just me and the cat at home. The hair on my body stands straight up. I look at my cat that's on the other end of the sectional, and she's like, what the hell is that? So, we both go to investigate. There's nothing in the hallway. But in the closet that's about a quarter of the way open, there's some Christmas tree ball ornaments. Nothing moving, but obviously it's the source. So I'm standing there looking like, the hell happened? Then a reef falls in the same closet, scaring the shit out of me. It's a very, very small closet where the water heater is. My fiancé has a few things in there for Christmas. There's also a cutout in the ceiling that has a panel over it. This closet's always given me an uneasy feeling. I don't know, maybe it's just the cutout. Should be nothing up there. We don't have an attic or any vents in the ceiling, just a small frame, an A-frame. I assumed it's there in case they needed... Well, I guess they needed it for whatever reason. Maybe there's just insulation up there. Last thing I should note... Before I took my daughter to school, she was looking for her other AirPod that she had just discovered she was missing. Strange thing is, after all this happened, I was sitting on the couch, looked over at the table where she was standing, asking about her AirPod, and there it was. Right where she was standing, just minutes earlier, talking about it. I know the common sense thing would have been that it fell right out then and there. Well, no, we have hardwood floors, so we would have heard it. My fiancé said she would have noticed it there. So other than that, my fiancé says that she occasionally has heard strange noises. But she said hers is mostly at night. I've also heard strange noises, but attribute them to the typical house noises. Some of the stuff she's described definitely doesn't fall into that category. One last thing I wanted to share. Yes, until eight months ago, I've never experienced anything like this, not even close to it. But when me and my fiancé were renting a different place over ten years ago, we would occasionally be woken up by the sound of a phone ringing. Sort of faint, but obviously a phone. We would get up to check in the room and it was coming from, and the phone wasn't even connected. Keep in mind, not a cell phone, a landline. Well, it seems as though the activity is stepping it up, starting to freak me out and get me frustrated and aggravated. The noises are happening so regularly now. Not only that, there's been a couple of big developments. I'm getting off work at 7 a.m. this morning and my fiancé calls and says I have something to tell you. I wasn't even thinking about what's been going on, so she said, You sure you want me to tell you? So I'm thinking to myself, oh no. So she tells me last night at 2.47 a.m. she wakes up burning up to the point of sweating, which she said she experienced the night before as well. Just seconds after waking up, she hears what she describes as a big ping sound. That's what my air fryer just did. The cat was sleeping with her at the foot of the bed. They both jump out of fear. Very shortly, she realizes the hanging mirror on the door, a door-length mirror. It's only hanging on by one corner. I'm thinking, oh boy, oh no, 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 no. So I get home and she shows me. Because she's already taken it down. It's attached to the door by three Velcro strips. Any normal person would think, oh, it's Velcro, it probably just came detached. And that's what I said to her. But it had three Velcro strips, two at the top, one at the bottom. It was just hanging by the one at the top right corner. Still, it's Velcro, right? This thing's been up for several years. Still Velcro, though. Could have just weakened, maybe. 
well, not so practical considering everything else we've been experiencing. Also, about her waking up the past two nights sweating and being hot in the room, our thermostat, well, you can take a good guess, it's right next to the closet I mentioned in the initial post. So if what they say is true, paranormal activity and drop in temperature coincide, it would make sense that it dropped the temperature near the thermostat, making it run harder and longer. Just a possibility theory of mine. So the more this goes on, the more I'm persuaded to believe it's something paranormal, and I don't like it. I've always been a skeptic about it my whole life till now. Had no reason to believe that kind of stuff, as I never experienced it. But jeez, please, make it stop now. First of all, I want to stress that I'm not the one to lie, embellish, or make stuff up. I'm just a laid-back, honest person trying to get through life minding my own business. So today, this morning, continued noises through the hallway as me and the cat are in the living room. All of a sudden, a loud thump toward the back of the house. At this point, I'm getting sick and tired of this. I go to the game room, which is the room right next to the closet hallway, to just sit and listen. My head's close to the window just the way it was sitting. I do hear some odd distant screaming and other noises, but sounds like that, maybe they're just near the window. Still, it could be anything outside, I suppose, but still kind of strange. What happened next is so unbelievable to me that right out of a paranormal movie amount of unbelievable sent chills through my whole body for several seconds. As I was sitting there on the couch with the closet to my right, this closet is right next to the closet that gave me the creeps, but just toward the back of it. So just think like one long closet section off into two. So right next to me, almost in my ear, I hear a beastly rattle. Clear as day, without a doubt, no TV or radio or phones on that can produce noise. I almost immediately froze, sitting in absolute quietness. Wondering what's going to happen now. So I peek into the closet that's already a quarter of the way open. I smell a strange stench, but I see and I hear nothing else. So I close the door, go back to the living room. To explain the noise, as crazy as it sounds, you've got to have seen the movie Predator. It's very similar to the rattle that he does. Some odd noises continue, like creaking and very subtle shuffling, like somebody walking and stopping. In the hallway, of course. I felt like someone watching me so creeped out that I was in fear to even walk through the house in broad daylight as a grown-ass adult man. At this point, I'm thinking, I'm going crazy. So I try to lay down and get some sleep in the living room because I'm not sleeping back at this point. The only other thing that happens at this point is some casual noises, mostly. There was a point where my cat's somewhere in the hallway. I hear a jump, a thump, and she lets out a little meow. I raise up to kind of check on her, and she looks a little confused, looking at the crack under the closet door as though she sees something. She's occasionally, you know, took the other car keys, of course, but perfect timing. So that's it for now. I messaged some of my strong faith friends, and they said that I could get somebody in there as soon as possible. I'm officially freaked out to the point that I don't know if I can stay there by myself. So Friday, I had my preacher friend from Florida call me and talk about what's been going on. He goes all over the country preaching. He gave me some useful information. He first told me about a couple of experiences that him and his brother had. But he kept saying he's not sure what would be bringing the stuff on. Him being very religious and knowing my lifestyle, he hinted at me still not going to church. And, well, I brought up not being married, which he knew as well. So he really said, first thing I need to do is get right with God. He wasn't really saying that's what's causing it all, but I got what he was saying. Definitely wouldn't hurt. I do pray almost every day. He also told me about some kind of preaching event that he went to. Apparently some well-renowned preacher that was teaching about certain things. He said he brought up the evil spirit realm, for lack of a better term. Evil or demonic spirits or whatever. He said he was explaining how between 2 to 4 a.m. is when they're most active. That my experience, or that it was pretty much all throughout the day. He said he couldn't remember exactly what he said, but he remembers it making a lot of sense. He was trying to go into a couple different things, but he said that it was getting really deep. He was saying something about fear, but had to go, so I wouldn't have been interested to hear what he had to say. But he did tell me I needed to rebuke it. 
Another Christian friend told me the same, that I needed to rebuke it before it got too comfortable. I felt like I'm in a dream. Never thought this stuff was real. After getting off the phone with him, I went straight home, going through every room, rebuking it, with chills running all through me. So the weekend goes by with nothing really happening. Till last night, really. Me, my fiancé, and the cat are on the couch. Fiancé is asleep on my lap. I start hearing noises in the kitchen. Pops, shuffles, creaks, and tapping on the walls. Just have this uneasy feeling, extreme chills. Like almost something rummaging through the kitchen. The feeling of something peeking at me. A few times, and also recently, I think I see a small shadowy figure peek out from the wall and retreat really fast. I just chalked it up to my eyes playing tricks on me. Because I tried recording in slow motion, but nothing. Also heard a little bang on the window where the cat was. She's just looking outside like she definitely heard something. Also, at one point during the noises, keep in mind she's pretty much asleep. I look at her and she has her nose up in the air, sniffing like crazy, like she smells something strong. Like I've said, I've noticed her doing this three times recently. Kind of odd for her. Forgot to mention, I did experience something a little odd Saturday during the day. Sitting on the couch and I heard three distinct taps on the window directly behind me. They're probably within the span of three minutes. If it was just one, you'd probably think something flew into the window, but funny thing is, it seems we never experienced anything together or, or if our daughter's awake. It's usually when we're alone. But if this continues on, even if just one more experience, I'm going to have to make a movie of some kind. My fiance hates when I bring up anything I experience, and heck, I even hate talking about it, but she says I'm feeding into it and being weak. Maybe so, but she didn't hear what I heard. So surreal. She only notices the obvious things, but I'm more keen to details and little things. With the beastly rattle I heard combined with the noises, stuff being moved, falling, thrown, the cat being so spooked and sniffing like she smells something adds pretty much to all of it. If it was all the minus the rattle I heard, I'd probably be okay for the most part. There's just no way to explain it away. As clear as day, right next to me, with complete quietness in the house. If someone could give me a normal explanation for that, I would be a hundred times better. Welcome, Curious Minds. To Paranormal M. Join us as we unearth stories that defy explanation. Subscribe and turn on notifications to be the first to delve into our latest mysterious adventures. We hope you're ready to question reality. Do we have a ghost? A little bit of backstory myself. Male 31. My girlfriend, female 26. Recently, like six months ago, moved into a block of flats next to a busy train line and on the site of an old granary. In her first couple of days of living here, my girlfriend was doing the dishes. She felt a tap on her shoulder, turned around, expecting it to be me. No one was there at the same time I was coming out of the main bathroom. I saw what looked like a foot. It was retreating to the bedroom, which I followed into the room and then the end suite. Called for her for her to then call back from the kitchen. We've then had a lot of interesting, what can only be described as interactions, with what we assume is a spirit. We have a TV and the surround sound in the living room that the sound bypasses, you know, the speakers to the TV to the surround sound, which can be manually turned on. Late one night a couple of months ago, I woke up to a glow down the hallway, and a sound went through to find the TV and surround sound turned on with normal TV playing, which we never use because we couldn't have left this on and the sound turns off after a few minutes with no active sound. We also bought an Xbox 360 when we moved in and that was working fine for the first four months. A couple of months ago, every so often this would randomly turn on and the disc tray would open and it would stay on until one of us would manually turn it off. While I was at work and my girlfriend was at home, three weeks ago it happened again. She thought she would ask out loud if it was our ghost friend, put the disc tray in and out. 
we since then have had this happen more frequently and it started responding through the disc tray. When I asked if it died here, it turned off the console. Now when it seems to have enough of our conversations, it turns it off. This morning it woke me up turning the Xbox on again, and it's done it a few times today, whenever I've been in the room. My girlfriend and myself went for a shower. She had no marks on her when we came out, had sex, and once we finished, the Xbox turned on again and kept doing the disc tray thing until we went through. I asked it if it liked me, and it responded when I asked if it wanted us to go back through the bedroom to turn off the console again. We got back through the bedroom and we noticed some red scratches on my girlfriend's lower stomach area. We've had a few early pretest signs. Recently, maybe she's been pregnant, feeling a bit off that makes these scratches. Well, they've turned up. Talking Cat. Why? I know the title sounds silly, but I had a cat that would talk at times. I'm not sure if this is paranormal or if she was just smart. When I was five, I got a kitten named Fluffy. One day, she was getting out of her litter box. I was trying to see her poop. I was a curious five-year-old. And she said, At, 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 at. When I tried looking, so I stopped. I tried again, and she said it again. Six years later, my mom, sister, and I were trying to give Fluffy some medicine. Mom put some medicine on her nose to lick it off, and when she licked it off, she clearly said, Yum, yum. We all heard it. There were other times, not as obvious, where she sort of understood what was being said. She got angry when I told my mom that she fell off the window ledge. She would get angry when we would say outside the cat's name. And another time, when I told her to leave my room, she got up and left. All these stories of her happened over a span of 17 years. I'm not trolling at all, I just want to know what the reason for this was. Was she just smart, or is there something else going on? Fantastic Coincidences February 28th My father died on February 28th, 1996. In late February 2013, as my hospitalized mother became aware of her own imminent death, she said at least twice that she wanted to die on February 28th also. On February 27th, she took a turn for the worst. The decision was made to stop artificial life support, as per her advanced directive. We spent the night of the 27th and 28th with my mother in her hospital room. Fairly early in the morning of the 28th, a medical team arrived. She was removed from life support. The doctor apologized to us because the intent to remove her from life support on the 27th, but something had gone wrong. So my mother got to die on February 28th. This was as she wished, because of a mix-up by the medical team. About a year later, we bought a new car with some of the money that we had inherited from Mom. We had the new plates mailed to us, and the plates were, slash are, 228. I don't know what, if anything, the letters might signify. I don't want to publicize the full license number, but the letters are interesting. But the 228? That is one in a 999 chance when the possible three-digit combination starts with 001, correct? Skippy and the Reddit Post My mother's first dog, which she had as a girl, was a fox terrier she named Skippy. When I was growing up, she several times talked about her memories of that dog. About two years before she died, she decided to get another dog, a grown Yorkshire terrier, whose last owner had died. She decided to name him Skippy, not knowing its original name. After Mom died, another home was found for poor Skippy with another elderly lady. Soon after my mother died, I noticed an interesting post on Reddit. 
It said, so this cute little dog we call Skippy comes to my dad's house every day for treats. Today he brought his duck friend, Henry. The attached photo showed a dog and a duck standing outside an open door looking in. The dog in the photo was named Skippy, and it was a Yorkshire Terrier, and my father's name was Henry. And guess how many comments there were when I first saw the post? 228. Screenshot. Haunted Guitar I thrifted a 50th anniversary Fender Strat from Goodwill for 16 bucks. And I was ecstatic, despite it being beat to hell like rusted and the finish was damaged. I leaned it against my wall and throughout the night I kept waking up and my attention was immediately drawn to it every single time. The next day I cleaned it up and since then it's felt like there's just a whole other person in my room with me at all times. It doesn't feel evil or malicious. Take this next bit with a grain of salt, because I have no way to prove it. I downloaded one of those spirit box apps that scanned through radio waves and decided to try talking to it. I got pretty much nothing at first and told it I'd leave it alone. After asking a few music-related questions... Anyway, later on, my mom and I are in my room just chatting and suddenly her Pandora app opens to a station. I decided to open the app again, and this time I swear we both heard kill yourself three times, and then a piss off. We kept asking questions and asked what kind of music it wants to hear, and my mom heard giants. So we played They Might Be Giants. We asked what it thought and got a beautiful. A few more questions were answered, and that's when me and my mom left the room. Everything else I asked was ignored. I'm kind of freaking out here. I think I'm tapping into the spiritual world, but I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. I don't know much about it. As I'm typing this, my heart's beating out of my chest. I was laying in my bed and I had this weird feeling in my gut out of nowhere. Can't explain it. I was just incredibly uneasy. Then I noticed my bedroom windows were all open and my curtains were wide open. It's the middle of the night and I thought this is weird. I always close the windows because winter nights are very cold in the UK. The little light was on in my room. It was bright enough for me to see every piece of furniture in my room clearly. And everything just felt off. I kind of told myself to calm down. It didn't feel like I was nervous. It just felt like something was really bad. One of my hands are shaking extremely hard as I'm typing this because I'm still so shook up from everything that happened tonight. For your information, I'm really bad at math. I could just never get it. I wanted to know how many days there are until a certain date and I heard a faint whisper coming from inside my pillow saying how many days there were. I wanted to laugh, then I searched it up and it was correct. That's when I started to feel so sick and nervous that I was dizzy. I stood up, closed the windows, and turned off the lights and returned to my bed. I realized I should post about this on Reddit because all my friends are sleeping and I can't message them for at least a few hours. It's 4 a.m. in the UK. So just before I go on Reddit, a random song I've only listened to two or three times in my entire life just springs to my mind. I wouldn't stop playing, and it quickly became an earworm, so I decided to just play music on my phone so it would stop bothering me. I shuffle all my music and that exact song starts playing, which just makes everything so much worse because it feels like someone or something's messing with me. I know as I'm typing this, my head is spinning. I can't even concentrate. The world feels so silent, even though I have music pretty much blasting in my ears. Now every song that I play, even if it's a song I've never heard before, it feels like I've listened to it a thousand times before. I want to find excitement in this new spiritual paranormal lifestyle, but I just feel so dead. 
but at the same time almost anxious now that I know that they're real. My life's getting so crazy. I'm a weird person, so this should interest me. But it just keeps getting worse, and I'm beginning to get a little scared of what's going on outside, because I don't want a bad spiritual experience to happen. People before told me that maybe there was a gas leak in my home, but these events have been happening for at least three weeks now. So if that was the case, I'd probably be dead from the poisoning. Maybe I did die and slip into a different reality, but I have no proof to back that up yet. I've suspected it before, though, after I did something bad and felt like I was dying, and then suddenly everything was okay with my health. I don't like to post about things unless I feel, well, unless it feels very real, because then I'll have to post about every little weird thing that happened to me in the past month. My childhood imaginary friend was a ghost. I've been thinking about my imaginary friend from childhood a lot lately. I just have so many questions. At this point, I'm looking for any kind of help or answers as to what was going on. To preface this, I was always able to see ghosts, especially as a child. There have been interactions between myself and some of them. Some that I was scared of, and some that stuck around. Enter Suki. When I was very young, in the mid-90s, I formed a friendship with Suki, my imaginary friend. I always referred to her as imaginary friend because nobody else could see her. I didn't get the same vibe that the other ghosts gave me, so I guess my child brain went the route of thinking she was an imaginary friend. I never questioned it probably because I was an incredibly lonely child. Hindsight is twenty twenty, and I now recognize that she was absolutely a spirit. We did so much together. We always hung out, watched TV, went on vacation together. Driving, she never flew, though. And one of our favorite things to do together was climbing down the cliff face at a coast to explore the beach. She always sat in the middle seat in the back of the car with us, between me and my sister, and I always bucked her. She told me that her name was Suki, so that was never a question. I was keenly aware that this version of the name was not Americanized like being short for Suzanne, but of a different origin. She wasn't a child like I was, but she also wasn't very old either. To me, she seemed to be maybe in her mid to late teens, but she was very dainty. As far as her appearance, she always wore a long white dress, had very long black, huh, disheveled hair. And her facial features were very sunken in, especially her eyes. She never smiled. She was also very pale. Does this sound familiar? Because it should. She looked exactly like Samara from The Ring. Imagine how utterly shocked I was when I saw that movie for the first time as an adult, jumping up and screaming, Oh my God, that's Suki. The rain came out many years after this started, and this also predates Netflix deliveries and Google. It couldn't have been influenced by any ghost or horror media because, well, readily available knowledge that you could just look up online simply didn't exist back then the way it exists today. I also didn't have any physical media of anything like that lying around the house. That was not a genre that my parents were into. I'd been researching this for some time. The closest thing to her that I can seem to pinpoint is she seems remarkably similar appearance-wise to the Yuri from Japanese folklore, which I can only imagine that Samara is also inspired by. I'm not too familiar with the inspirations there, though. I was never afraid of her. She looked scary, but she never scared me. She never gave me any kind of threatening vibes. I just want to make that very, very clear. At the end of the day, as I got older, I just stopped seeing her at some point, which kind of makes me sad, but I don't feel like she ever left. I think about her nearly every day. It's my Roman Empire. I wasn't born alone. 
Okay, the title sounds creepy as hell, but it's actually true, according to what I've been told. I wasn't born alone. I had another spirit with me. And I'll explain how I found that out. I never felt like I was from Earth. Never felt human. I've always worried about where I came from, what my mission on Earth is. Mind you, this is when I was a child. I don't think like this anymore. I was a very spiritual kid and one of those kids who would say weird things to their mom about their past lives. I've also always had vivid dreams and have a deep interest in them. And I keep this information as it'll become important. I was also constantly afraid of being watched. I used to worry that a spirit was watching me when I went to sleep. With time, I randomly started to worry that a ghost girl was sitting on my bed and watching me. It felt a bit too real. I had many nightmares that someone was chasing me, especially a dark figure. When I woke up, I usually ran out of my room. Then when I was 11, this dark figure actually caught me for the first time. I was forced to look at its face. It was a girl similar to the one I imagined sitting on my bed. She held me in place and asked me to do something for her. And if I did it, she would let me move away. I didn't even listen before agreeing because I was so scared. She laughed and jumped at me, which made me wake up. That was my first sleep paralysis. I remember looking around with just my eyes, unable to move my body and seeing the girl laying down next to me. After that, I constantly had dreams about her. And not only dreams, sometimes I could interact with her by just closing my eyes. I would get into a trance and she manipulated my mind. Yeah, I know that sounds weird, but it's what happened. If I closed my eyes and I imagined her, my imagination would soon become almost vivid, like re reality vivid. She controlled herself in my imagination. It's like I couldn't control what she did and the way I imagined her. She would often just smile and give me jump scares, literally jumping and grabbing me. It always left me with a weird sensation all over my body, like I was vibrating. I also had a few out-of-body experiences. One time I was just sitting down and stood up. But instead of standing up with my physical body, I stood up with my spirit. I turned around and saw myself, then re-entered my own body. It was a very scary moment, and there was a bunch of people around me when it happened. So I had to pretend nothing happened. This is how I remember it. I was still a kid. After a few years, my mom called a medium to help me with my situation. I honestly didn't understand much of what happened in my sessions with the medium, but the girl stopped appearing to me after them. My mom didn't explain it all to me until I was a bit older. So she told me that the medium found out that the girl I interacted with was a spirit from a past life that I had. Someone who loved me, and she was still attached to me, so she couldn't move on. She wanted to stay with me, so she chased and grabbed me. That would explain why I was so spiritual and felt disconnected from the world. I had someone from my past life right there, always by my side. Woman and Child This incident happened a few months ago while I worked at a former police department here in the southeastern U.S. There was a patrol officer there, and our shifts at the time were 12-hour shifts, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. I enjoyed working nights. A lot of fun and crazy things happened which kept things interesting. The night started as it usually does. A shift briefing, pass on, general pre-shift shenanigans. I'd say about the first three to four hours were pretty normal. Wrecks, domestic disturbances and the like. But I'd say 11.30 to 45 we received a call for a severe wreck. A black sedan rolled over and was upside down in a ditch. The callers who never, well, they never stopped. But they said they didn't see anyone in or around the vehicle. I was the second on scene, with my sergeant being the first. 
Now I've been to some gruesome scenes, gunshot and stabbing victims, welfare checks to find decomposing bodies and other homicide suicide scenes. I was generally okay with handling them, but nothing could have prepared me for this scene. In the car was an infant's child seat ripped from the restraints. My first hope was there wasn't a child in the car. The further investigation, the front windshield wasn't even attached to the car. It happens in a rollover, but about 30 feet away, knee-high grass. I saw a depression from what looked to be something displacing the grass. As I approached, I saw a mangled leg twisted and contorted. Then the body of a woman, 28 years old, based on her driver's license. In and out of consciousness, hardly able to speak. When I found her, fire was rolling on the scene. I radioed to them, found a victim. Despite the noise I heard distinctly, where's my baby? When I looked down on her, she was staring at me. My heart sank. There was a child somewhere either in the vehicle or ejected. I immediately began searching the field after telling my sergeant that a child was also in the vehicle. We searched and searched and eventually, and fortunately, that was the moment something in me just changed. After the mother and child were transported, we learned that the mother succumbed to her wounds. A single car, two fatality wreck. I was placed on admin leave. We had to speak with our psychiatrist for several days until that deemed it okay for me to return to shift. My first night back was routine calls that we usually had. The same as the second night. The third night we received a call, once again a wreck, on the same road as before in the same manner. I was closer to the location and arrived on the scene first, mind racing, heart going a hundred miles an hour. The memories flooded back from the first collision, but as I rolled up to the scene, nothing. No wreck, just an empty field in darkness. My blue lights were on and so were my scene lights. Confused if I was at the right location, I radioed my dispatch to confirm to them that I had acknowledged I was in the right place. I scanned, and nothing was out of the norm. Nothing was disturbed. The ground looked the same as it had. thought perhaps this was a cruel prank call, maybe an error on the caller. So I got in my patrol car, turned my blue lights off, and prepared to drive further down the road to search. As I placed my car into drive, I noticed movement out of the peripherals. But when I looked, there was just inky darkness. I shook it off and drove off. I never found the second supposed accident and ended up being told to clear up as other calls were waiting. But later that night, when things began to calm down, around 3.30 a.m., I decided to drive down that road once again. As I turned left onto the road, I felt as if something nudged my right arm. Instantly, my hair and my arms stood up on end, and I got the chills. No one else was in the car with me, but I tried to rationalize it. I continued on down the road. As I approached the original wreck scene, I saw off to the side of the road what appeared to be someone standing in the distance in the field. Despite the distance and being in the shadows of my headlights, I could tell what clothes they were wearing. Blue jeans, light shirt. But what caught me off guard was I could see the figure holding something in its arms. As I got closer, I slowed down to a crawl, trying to use my spotlight to see better. But went to look again, there was nothing there. Something in me told me to stop the car, and I did. As I got out, I looked into the field with my flashlight from the roadside. Behind me and on the other side of the road from where the field was, was a wooded plot of land. From there, I could hear what sounded like footsteps, but lighter. This was late autumn, but there was a lot of leaves on the ground. So there should have been more noise as something was walking around on freshly fallen leaves. I informed my dispatch that I was stepping out of my vehicle, and where? As I ventured out into the field, I found the original spot where the mother laid. Gauze, gloves, and various other medical bandages still laid there intertwined in the long grass. Despite being late autumn, the temperature was sitting around 55 degrees Fahrenheit, but as I approached, I could feel the temperature drop. 
I got the chills again, goosebumps, and a feeling as if I was being watched. I scanned again, still nothing. As I left the spot and began walking back to my car, I looked down as to not trip as I went. I looked up and my heart sank. Standing on the driver's side of my car, illuminated ever so faintly, but not enough to see a face, was a woman holding clearly a child in her arms. It was clear, the same clothes as before, but an obscured face. I called out to her and continued my way to her, trying to shine my flashlight at her. But as I did, I saw her step back into the shadows, my flashlight seemingly not able to pierce the darkness. As I got to my car, I called out again, searched with my flashlight, even going as far as turning my scene lights on. Nothing. Paranoid, I searched my vehicle, searched the wood line, and the feeling of dread became just too strong. I eventually got into my car and left. Shaken up by the experience, I called my sergeant and told him what happened. PTSD, he said. And I was told to take the next several days off and speak with the counselor. Mess me up. After everything that was said and done, I did return to work a week later. I just never went back down that road by myself while employed there. Several other people witnessed the same experience after I left. Even people who were never even on the scene during the wreck. All describing them saying they saw a woman holding a child in a field in the tree line. I had to tell my husband that he died. In October 2017, I lost my husband while seven weeks pregnant. The day he died, I left to work in a hurry. We shared some texts after he woke up about a phone interview that he had later in the day about him having some pain in his leg. Then a quick phone call, a couple hours later, to tell me that he was running to the pharmacy for pain meds. I attempted several calls about an hour later to make sure it was home safe. There was no answer, which wasn't like him. I tried calling him for hours until finally a woman answered his phone, stating that he was in the sheriff's department. Asked me to come home. At the time I worked in a prison, and out of fear that he'd gotten into some sort of trouble, left my post, got to my car, and sped the whole 30-minute drive back to town. Upon turning to our parking garage, I see a large white van that read Coroner. As I walked up to her home, I was greeted by the same lady on the phone blocking my view into her home. She let me know that my husband suffered a heart attack, later confirmed as a pulmonary embolism explaining the leg pain he mentioned the morning of his death. Apparently, my husband made it back home and into the house and locked the security door before collapsing from a heart attack. He screamed for help, our neighbor and her son heard and ran over to help, but they couldn't get into the house due to all the doors and windows being locked. The son later apologized for not breaking a window, stated due to the shock and panic he'd lost all sense of reason. They were able to talk to him through the door while they called 911 but unfortunately he stopped responding a few moments before help arrived. He was pronounced dead on arrival. A week or so after his service, his best friend's wife offered a cleansing and a card reading by her mom. Although I was skeptical at the moment, I was desperate for any kind of communication with them or closure. She mentioned a lot of interesting things in the reading but the most prominent for me was that he was currently in a stage after death where the soul relives its whole life. She compared it to when people say their life flashes before their eyes. She said it was a place every soul visits after death as a way to reflect on the way that they lived their life and the person that they were. She told me his death was so sudden that he hadn't realized he had died yet, that I'd need help for him to cross over. She said she felt that I was... Well, I was the one that would help him, and instructed me to light white candles in a jar of water to guide him to peace. Fast forward a few months later, and I moved into my parents' house. I was laying on the couch and started to feel very heavy, as if I'd been administered anesthesia. It was definitely some type of sleep paralysis that I was feeling. When I could finally open my eyes, I was still laying on the couch in my parents' living room, except my husband was sitting on a chair right in front of me as clear and as real as before he died. 
Before I could speak, he began telling me he was nervous for his phone interview, the one he was supposed to have the day he passed. He told me he was excited and hopeful I'd get the job, and wanted help preparing for it. I looked at him with pain and tears, and he began to repeatedly ask me what was wrong. I apologized. Baby, I'm so sorry. Do you remember the pain you had in your leg? You had blood clots. One made its way to your heart. You aren't going to make it to the interview, baby. You died. I'll never forget the look in his face. It was a long period of confusion that turned into realization. I apologized again, told him I loved him, and begged him to respond. He just sat there with a strange look in his face. I immediately woke up. The chair for my parents' kitchen table now sat right in front of me, empty. Never dreamed of him after that. I pray it's because I helped him get closure that he needed to cross over. We have a five-year-old son now who dreams very specific dreams about his dad. He wakes up talking about things that he couldn't possibly know unless it came straight from him. Losing my husband was the first real experience with death, but it brought me peace to have my own bit of confirmation that there is something more after life. My first paranormal experience with ghosts. In brackets, fucking real. I didn't believe any of these things until one day. I was in a rush because my father was in a hospital on the other side of Spain. When I reached the town, I didn't have a place to stay, so I just jumped inside an abandoned house. It was a huge, immense house with four levels and like 30 rooms. It had a huge hole in the center, just like if a meteorite blasted there. It felt very silent and deep, a dark and creepy energy inside the house. So I decided to camp on the rooftop. I only stayed there for about a week on the fifth day. I got a new house with a friend, but I still had to stay there two more days. I decided to explore that house in the daylight, went through many rooms, had at least three big rooms for children, maybe. No pictures of the people from the house. The energy went stronger and stronger in the back of the house. I reached the back and there was a wall. It was the house limits. So after that, it was another neighbor. I listened to a voice inside my head. Put your hand inside the wall and grab it. I was like, what? I said to myself, I may just be crazy, but let's try. Put my hand above the wall and inside into a hole. Grabbed an x-ray. That was when I went to my hands and I looked close to it. It was the x-ray of a child. By the size of the thorax. It had a problem. It had a tumor the size of an eight ball. Immediately I was in shock realizing stuff. Put the picture back. I was scared because I felt a presence in this house all the time. Like someone was behind me. Or watching me. When I climbed the debris back, I found this picture in a hole in the wall. And it was near the entrance where it belonged to a hall, before that hall was destroyed. I grabbed the picture, asking myself how the heck I didn't realize it was there. I gave it a close look. It was a picture of a seven-year-old child smiling, very happy and healthy almost, as if he was staring at me. The strange thing was, well, the picture was the exact same wall I was staring at that was now destroyed. I put it back in the hall, and it was just about to happen after just being traumatized to this day. The picture was swallowed to the left. I looked left and there was no hole. The picture was pulled like a magnet, very fast, very clear. Thought it was a rat, but nope, the damn wall had no holes. I grabbed my stuff and just ran. Strange Light in the Woods So the following happened to me one night a few years ago that I still don't quite understand what I could have seen. I live on an acre in a neighborhood. Toward the back of my property, front half is fenced. Back half is my shed surrounded by trees. There's sparse woods that separate my property from my neighbors. One night as I'm walking to the back to get something out of my shed, carrying my phone with a flashlight on so I can see. I open the back gate and take a few steps past when I suddenly see a strange white light blink into existence about 50 feet in front of me, to the left. 
just inside the tree line. Best I can describe the light is it looked like a round Christmas light, except it didn't radiate the light outward like a light bulb does. It lasts about one to two seconds, then just blinks out of existence. That is, until it blinked back on only a second later, but about ten feet closer to me. It did this multiple times, always staying just inside the tree line, arching toward me. Staying at the same height from the ground each time, maybe three or four feet in the air. The last time it blinked on, it was only a few feet in front of me, just outside the tree line this time. And in a panic, I raised my phone's flashlight. Saw nothing there, no lightning bug, which I've never seen in the woods around my house, though they do live in my state, or any other insect flying. I fast walked right back to my porch, looked back where I was, and stayed there for several minutes waiting to see it again. It never appeared. After a few years later, I've never encountered the light again, and still have no logical way of explaining what I saw. The Haunted Staircase The first strange thing happened not long after we moved into our house. One night I was sitting on a couch in the living room facing the TV, which was also in the direction of the stairs and the entry to the kitchen, just able to see both with the peripheral vision. I then noticed movement going up the stairs, so I call out to my wife and she's going to bed. She calls out, No, I'm in the bathroom. So I say, never mind, just thought I saw you walk upstairs. Noticed it a couple more times, and eventually I tried to investigate it. Figured maybe it was just a shadow caused from car lights driving by. But after several cars passed by, no shadows were made. My wife asked me why I kept looking at the stairs and the front door. So I told her, I, well, I could swear I see a shadow of a person out of the corner of my eye. But when I look, there's nothing. She just kind of looks at me semi-worried and says, You mean on the staircase? Turns out she's seen it multiple times, but always just wrote it off as well. I started joking that we had a shadow man in her house. She told me to stop because it seems kind of creepy. Can't remember how many days later it was, but another night we were laying in bed, both scrolling on our phones. We hear a strange thumping sound coming from downstairs, growing slightly louder. Both of us are freaked out, and unfortunately, being the man, I got my handgun out of the dresser drawer and got out of bed as quietly as I could in case something was about to attack us. The thumping stops. Wait a few seconds. Silence. I open my bedroom door and quickly step around the corner with my gun raised and ready. There is no one there. I see the front door is locked and there's no light on downstairs. So I look around and find all the windows and doors are locked. The next day, while I was quickly walking upstairs, I realized that the sound of my feet hitting the steps was the same sound we heard the night before. Something was on the staircase. Now I flash forward to just a few days ago. Me and my wife are in her dining room, opposite side of the staircase from the living room with the door to the half bath under the stairs the same room, getting our daughter ready to go to the stores. Now I had my back turned, so... I didn't see it happen, but my wife saw a wireframe reindeer that we have on a shelf, sitting on the right side of the metal frame tissue holder on the left, above our toilet, fly forward several feet, hit the baseboard on the opposite wall, left side of the toilet, and then lay still on the floor. I put the deer back on the shelf and again attempted to recreate it somehow, falling or bouncing off the toilet to get where it landed. But the only way that it fell, it landed on the toilet that was open or bounced off the rim to the right of the toilet. I don't get the feeling that whatever it was causing it was strange, or that it was malevolent, but it certainly wanted to make its presence known. To the best of my knowledge, no one had died in this house. Didn't ask when we bought it. But for whatever reason, it's only confined to the staircase, and not the whole house. We've also noticed her daughter look up the staircase at times and talk and reach up toward the second floor, then laugh and run away like to play chase, run around the house. She can go up and down the stairs by herself and tells us when she's going upstairs to her playroom. So again, very strange.
Nursing Home Night Shift. I've been a CNA for six years. I've had a lot of paranormal experiences during the night shift between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. The first place I worked, I got a call light in a room where somebody had recently passed away. I was the only person working in that part of the building. When I got to the room, it was locked like usual. When I unlocked it and went into the cord and the wall was pulled, needing to be reset. But no one was in there. That same place had an activity room with a couple armchairs and a couch. I was laying on the couch one night playing on my phone. I had my pager sitting next to me. It suddenly flew off the couch so fast like somebody had smacked it as hard as they could. That same place also had a basement that had a motion detecting light in all three rooms. I walked into the first room to grab something. When I walked back out, every single room in the hallway had the lights on. You could always hear people running up and down the halls or across the ceiling. But if you went to investigate, no one was ever there. The scariest time was when I was working a bunch of double shifts. I decided to take a nap in the break room in the basement during my lunch break. I had sleep paralysis where I was stuck on the couch. There was an old man in the corner of the room watching me but keeping his face hidden from me. I tried to move to get away, managed to break three and run out of the room a couple of times only to suddenly appear back on the couch. However, the second my break ended at 30 minutes, I was suddenly able to move. I sat up and as soon as I did, the lights went out. There was a timer. We should have turned it off after five minutes, but they stayed on the entire time until my break had ended, as if they had detected the person in the corner the whole time. The last crazy thing that I experienced was at a new center I was working at. I would always hear doors opening and slamming shut, or a lady's voice yelling at the end of the hallway. Is anybody here? But when I'd check, all the rooms everybody would be asleep in their beds. At the same facility, I went to a room to help somebody use the bathroom. When I got him, sat him up on the edge of the bed, and had him grab my arms, I said, I'm going to help you stand up, so we can use the toilet real fast, okay? And a woman right behind me, almost as if she was leaning over my right shoulder, said, Okay, in reply. Obviously, no one was there. Moved into a new apartment. My husband and I have lived in our current place for a little over two years. It's a duplex that was built in the 70s. It was both our first time living without roommates, so neither of us had a lot of furniture. I remember the living room only having a rocking chair, a TV stand, and a coffee table to put out pillows to use as a couch. The house was very bare for the first few months. I've always been pretty sensitive to the paranormal. I have a lot of experiences throughout my life. I remember being so on edge that we had moved here. It always felt like there was someone else in the house with you. I tried to tell myself it was all in my head because I knew it was an older place. I tried not to think about it too much. I was working at a nearby hospital during this time. I had to be able to work early in the morning. Got up, got ready, and was ready to leave. The only problem was I couldn't find my keys anywhere. My husband and I searched the entire house. Like I mentioned earlier, the house was bare. There wasn't a lot of spots where it could be. Don't remember how I got to work that day either. I think my husband ended up taking me. We spent days looking for those keys. Pretty sure that we were just going to have to pay to have a new key made. However, one evening we were sitting in the living room. My husband goes, are Those are your keys. They were sitting underneath the rocking chair in plain sight. I'd taken the cushions off that chair, flipped it over, moved it across the room while trying to find the keys, and suddenly they were there. But a couple more times where things went missing would randomly appear over the counter, or somewhere else obvious, but the keys have always stuck out to me. My husband also reminded me of another time when we first lived here. We were laying in bed one night in our phones and talking. We weren't sleeping yet. Out of nowhere, there was a pounding on our bedroom door, like someone had hit it as hard as they could. We both jumped up quick, thinking someone was in the house. 
but when we opened our bedroom door and looked around the house, it was empty. I don't think someone could have hit it and ran out in that time without us hearing them. The floors are old, and every step you take is greeted by loud, creaking floorboards. So we would have heard someone. After that, we decided to sage the house. It had such a cleaner feeling in the air afterwards. I don't know how to describe it, really. Things stopped going missing, too. It finally didn't feel like there was someone else there. We ended up saging pretty regularly after that. What did I see? Basically, I was lying in bed, starting to fall asleep with my girlfriend on the phone. I'd already started with some weird feelings in my body that made me open my eyes multiple times. Usually, I'm the type that's asleep before my head hits the pillow. I had some weird pains in various places, my chest, arm, and head mostly. At one point, I was even thinking I was about to die have a heart attack or a stroke. Not that the pain was unbearable, but just such weird pains they were. Last time I opened my eyes, I somehow turned my head to the side, where my windows are. Everything is closed to my room. It has curtains that let no light pass, so the room is usually as dark as it can be. This is where I saw something. Panicked, started basically shouting for Google to turn on the lights. That didn't work, because I was on the phone, of course. Between my bed and the windows, I saw a human-shaped outline. Not really big or menacing or anything, but a human-like shape. It was transparent. I could see the curtains through it, but like I was watching through heat. Those little waves you see rising from roads and cars when it's really hot. The outline was a bit lighter. Not white, but definitely not dark but I saw a distinct outline. This is what made me recognize the human-like form. However, still it made me panic. I actually tried touching it, tried to push it away while trying to get my lights on, but I didn't feel anything, only saw it slowly moving toward the bed. Now I'm left wondering what this was. If at all it was anything else from being half asleep and having some blurry vision. Hoping anybody here can give me some information or had a similar experience. To end this all, I have to give some extra information. The house itself isn't that old. It was built at the end of the 70s. No known weird things. Also, nothing weird happened in the previous four years that I've lived here. I've been with my girlfriend for two years now. She's spiritual and religious, Latin American girl. And she's had encounters in the past that she says, but mostly as a child. She also used to lay tarot cards up in the first few months of our relationship. Talked with her about this, of course, and she thinks I was visited, but not necessarily by an evil or bad energy, because I saw a transparent shape with a more white outline. Not something dark or red or anything that would symbolize evil. She even says it could be an angel or my guardian angel because of the brighter outline. Now, as a non-religious atheist and someone who has no experience with the paranormal, I don't directly believe in, but it does have me thinking, especially since this was my first time I'd ever felt like this from anything unexplainable in all my 30 years of living. The day I realized death is not the end of a human life. Everything took place about two years ago. When it happened, all I knew about it, it messed with my mind with a week or two, and I told some of my friends this crazy story, bringing literal chills to the both of us after the story was told. I kind of forgot about it. I found this subreddit a day or two with some posts that reminded me of this story I'm about to tell. For context, my grandmother on my mother's side died from breast cancer five or six years ago. I knew the death of my grandmother affected my mom mentally, and it was challenging for her to not cry on the daily. A year passed and my mother started to focus on other things and let my granny rest peacefully. Also, I knew very much my mother believed in signs for my grandmother. For example, 
and driving back from home from the funeral, she thought all the semi-trucks with big headlights were a sign of her presence. I was in the basement, late night, watching TV. I was pretty calm. I always hated being in the basement, though, and I still do. Bring some type of odd feeling. Suddenly, without any previous signs, I heard a loud knock on the door behind me. I quickly turned and stared for a couple of seconds. I then figured it was just the wood cracking. Not even a couple of minutes after, while still on my guard, another knock. But this time, it clearly wasn't the wood. I ran upstairs without even thinking, and my mom woke up because of all the noise from me running up the stairs. She asked me what was going on, and I told her about those really weird and abnormal noises. She seemed surprised and kind of scared. She told me that it was probably just the water pump or the wood. I told her it probably was, and I went to sleep. No news after that. A couple of days pass. Something else occurred. I was in my room, maybe 10 p.m. or so. I thought me, my sister, and my mom were home that night. I was on my cell phone scrolling through YouTube, I believe. But I heard a slight whisper in my ear. It was really soft and quiet. I thought I misheard something or that it was my sister making noise in the bathroom. The whisper occurred again, exactly like last time. I figured it was something weird. I assumed it was my sister. I got up and banged on the bathroom door. It was unlocked. Lights were off. I checked her room, empty and dark. I absolutely shat myself. My sister was not home. I ran down the stairs and found my mom on the couch and told her everything. She gave me the exact same look as last time I told her. She said it was pretty weird. I stayed with her. I didn't want to go back to my room alone. When I got tired, I quickly went to sleep and forgot about it. Again. I would say a week or two passed, and I was at a restaurant with my dad, mom, and sister. We were driving back home, and my dad just kind of wanted to talk, so I listened. On both of these nights, my mother prayed exactly 24 hours before I reported what happened to her that my grandmother shows herself in some kind of way. I was absolutely mind blown. My dad told me I must have had some paranormal skills because I was the only one to witness those events. I'm not done. On the second time when I heard the whispers, it turns out when I was explaining the situation to my mom, the flipping music that was playing at my grandmother's funeral was playing on the TV. When my dad told me this, I was baffled. I believe in the presence of dead ones since then. Feel free to MAA. Romanticizing the afterlife from a young age due to reoccurring dreams. I'm unsure if anybody else has had an experience like this, but from a very young age I've romanticized dreams about the afterlife. Well, an entity in the afterlife. The earliest I remember it was probably around seven or eight, but I had a dream that there was a ghost girl in my room and me and her watched from my window as my childhood friends played outside without us. It was also a very somber mood, and even though words weren't spoken, I just knew that she wouldn't believe that we'd be there very long because she had to move away. I get similar dreams maybe twice a year. And while they differ, they always have the same ghost girl. Long black hair, everything else hidden in a dark purple, almost black cloak. I've never seen the skin color, eye color, or anything else. Just the hair. The dreams always seem to have a somber mood. Though aside from the first initial dream, I can't recall if anything causes that mood. This also has led to me having nearly no fear of ghosts. And although I personally am a non-believer, I heavily romanticize the thought of human-ghost interactions because of it. As in... It makes me believe that there's an incident that happened that would make me become a believer. It would have no chance of being a negative interaction. Does anyone know of a demon that's a dark shadow with a wolf-like head? Growing up at my parents' house, it was clear that it was haunted even from a very young age. I was one of six kids, and we all agreed that we were constantly experiencing various different things. 
had a friend who slept over one night, but left in the middle of the night and refused to come back to my house, even during the daytime. I can list all my experiences here, and it would last weeks. But to sum it up, I've heard voices, seen dark shadows, felt presences, and both me and my sister suffered from sleep paralysis, quickly saw things. However, me and one of my sisters were the first two people to move out when we had each gotten married. And thankfully, both of us have since almost completely stopped experiencing anything altogether. What I wanted to ask was about today. It's an experience that stuck with me. I dreamed that my father was going to ask me to take down the Christmas decorations. I brought each bag one by one filled with decorations into the basement. And as I brought down the nativity set... I consciously thought to myself that I'd better make sure baby Jesus is not face down, because he'd probably be sacrilegious. Well, on my next trip down with more bags, I noticed that the baby Jesus had consciously made sure it was faced up, was now face down. Immediately I thought, oh shit, that's not good. When I looked up, I saw what looked to be a seven-foot pitch black shadow humanish figure that wasn't directly facing me, but more toward the side, giving me his profile. His head was not a human-shaped head, but rather almost like a pitch-black shadow of a wolf's head. Without moving its mouth, it spoke to my mind in a deep voice, repeating, I found you, I found you, I found you, until I woke up. Immediately upon waking up and going downstairs, my father asked me to take down the Christmas decorations. I was like, fuck that. Does anybody else have an idea of what I experienced or what I encountered? Ironically, enough of the apartment me and my wife moved is actually connected to the backyard to a cemetery with tombstones less than 500 feet from the bedroom window. I've never felt creeped out here, but in my parents' home, it was like a constant depression. The feeling of always being watched, and pretty much everybody who spent time in that house has experienced things. Hell. Even my friends have heard stuff through my Xbox mic. But I've always wanted to know what the fuck it was that I saw in my basement in that dream. Because I know in my heart that it was the entity that was in that house. For a while after that dream, my experiences had escalated. Step into the realm of wonders with Paranormal M. Subscribe, hit that notification bell, and prepare to be captivated by our latest thought-provoking tales. Your journey into the extraordinary begins here. We hope you enjoy the ride. Ghost. Well, how did my daughter know? My partner's blind, so a nanny takes her daughter, she's three years old, out for walks on weekends. She likes to go see horses, which are in a field at the end of an alley, just around the corner. That alley has a few row houses and one farmhouse at the end. It's named after a cave and a well that used to be there. Now that it's closed off, let's call it a pit road, not to bother the translation. Today my daughter came back from her usual Sunday walk, almost in a panicky state. Water, she yelled. Someone's fallen to the water, must be saved. Our nanny, thinking she was afraid of the deep puddles in the field after the heavy rains from the past days, she didn't think much of it. When she came home, my daughter cried for me. She heard a man scream from the water. He called her name and asked for a hand to be saved. She said the man was fallen. She said something was with him, and that person too needed help. I never told her this story, but in that exact alley used to be a cave and a water well in the front garden of a little house. And sometime close to maybe a little bit after World War II, a man in a wheelchair fell into that well and drowned. After the incident, they filled up the cave and the well was shut off. A few years ago, another man committed suicide in the same lot. He drowned too, but in his bath after taking tranquilizers. I never told my daughter these stories as she was too young. We tried to calm her, primarily thinking she was afraid of the deep puddles, but then she became angry with us because we didn't take her seriously. 
She insisted that two men were screaming for help calling her name and asked for a hand to be saved. My hair stood up right as she told that story, that the one man couldn't move his legs and had no hair, which matches the description of the man in the wheelchair. What should I do? I guess the cat sat on the box now. My Encounter Hey, so this happened back in, I think, 2008 or 2009. 22 now. So back when I was 8, my mother and baby sister shared a birthday, and we were celebrating it. I'm Mexican, so back in these little parties lasted way into the night. Needless to say, it was dark. I was jumping on my trampoline with my cousin that was positioned to my right side of my house, looking toward my neighbor's backyard. While I was jumping around, playing with my cousin... I remembered falling to my knees to rest. I looked toward my neighbor's yard and saw this white translucent figure. It was kind of deformed, really. I remember it having two deep dark holes where its eye should be, and a gaping black hole of a mouth opened, and a fourth hole directly in the center of its head. And no, it wasn't small either. I remember it being decently sized. I would estimate a two in radius, maybe. Either way, I also recall it having arms, no visible hands, and its bottom half kind of dissolving to nothing, like a gradient effect. I remember it so well, yet I only ever saw it once in my life, probably for roughly a minute, because my cousin and I looked at it and got scared when we realized it's a ghost. Then we ran out to tell parents. That's basically it, though. Has anyone experienced an encounter like this? Or maybe even the same entity? I've had other encounters like shadow figures and hearing my name called out. When I went to ask any of my sisters if they called my name, they all denied it. Even though I'm 100% positive my name was said. Moving Chair 2022. So about a year ago when I used to live with my parents, stayed in my old room I had with a desk and an office chair. So I was on a Discord chat with a friend I made over the internet. We were talking about their experiences with a demon. A very sad story, honestly. It was late into the night and I was actually sleepy, so this probably had something to do with being sleepy, but while I was telling them something, I had my eyes closed because it's nice to talk on the phone with my eyes shut. But suddenly I hear the wheels of my office chair. I always tuck it under my desk and it rolled. And I opened my eyes, whipped my head toward the direction of my desk, and all I see is my chair like two feet away from where it's supposed to be. And the jacket I put on sway a bit, as it had just moved. Now again, I was sleepy, and it could have been my head making it up, but I saw my jacket on that chair move. I had like two jackets on that chair shouldn't have been able to move without my assistance, not to mention there was a rug behind it, too. So it would need some force to move it like two feet away. So yeah, I freaked out, had a little panic attack, and I hung up the call with my friend and told my parents. So I told my mom and my dad to give me this liquid, maybe holy water, my grandma gave them. My mom said I had to dip my finger and dab the back of my knees and inside of my elbows and the back of my neck. Does anybody know why that is? need some explanations. Anyways, that's all, and next time I'll tell you all about some shadow figures I witnessed. The Cat Said Goodbye I work the graveyard shift for a residential habilitation company, meaning I work inside the client's home. When I first got started with this company, I had two specific clients I would work with every week. They lived in the same house. I was going on three months at the company at this time, and my clients were super high-functioning and would go to bed super early. They usually wouldn't wake up until their morning staff arrived. This meant that I could frequently get away with sitting outside to vape for extended periods of time. 
During these first three months, there was a collection of neighborhood cats. They would wander around, and frequently they'd come up to me and let me pet them. I feel like I'm a cat whisperer, because I've never met a cat that didn't like me, and I have three cats of my own. Well, one day when I was out for work, the next-door neighbor's house caught fire and started burning down. I had to call the fire department and try to keep it from spreading to my client's house because of the proximity. It was a whole ass mess, and not a very fun night. Well, about a week later, the owners of this house asked me if I'd seen any of their cats, showed me pictures, and I'd seen one of them because he would come up to me all the time and get pets when I'd sit outside. Side note, it was hard to get this cat confused with other cats in the neighborhood because he was a chonker. He was blind in one eye, had a mustache with the way his coat looked. They got really excited to hear the house, and mind you, I literally pet this cat the night before they came asking about him. That was the last time I saw the cat. Well, eventually they started clearing out the house, and unfortunately they found all three of their cats dead in the house, including the one I thought I had pet. As soon as I heard what had happened, a chill went down my spine, because I realized I was possibly petting a ghost cat. I guess he liked me enough to come say goodbye before he passed on. I try not to think about it, though, because it's my only ghost encounter where I can't explain it away with logic. The only logical explanation I can come up with is there was somehow another fat, partially blind tuxedo cat with a mustache in the neighborhood. But the fact I never saw the cat again makes me feel like that's not the case. Is this a ghost? or just my imagination. Hey, I just want to know if this is something explainable or if this is a ghost kind of thing. To be honest, this could just be a mimic. I don't really know anything about them, but it happened so long ago and nothing similar has happened since. One night when I was roughly 14, I was taking a shower at 10.30ish. My brother knocked on the door saying to hurry up because he had to take a shower. He did this often, because I would accidentally take showers when he did. So I hurried up, got my stuff together before leaving. Walked out of the bathroom and thought I saw him in the room next to my room. It was dark, so I couldn't really tell. But it wasn't like seeing him, it was like sensing he was there. So I just walked on to my room without a second thought. It seemed a bit weird, but I thought he was holding his phone up to his face like he normally does, but I didn't see any light. But again, didn't really think about it until afterward. As I was walking, I kind of walked a bit cockeyed, almost bumped into him. So as soon as I reached my room, I turned around to say sorry. But no one was there. Turned on the light to see, and he wasn't there. Mind you, we could have just walked away without me noticing. It's not that quiet. He was right next to me. So I quickly walked back into my room, completely freaked out. I still have no clue whether this was a ghost or just me being tired. I'm ready to go. I have a few unexplained ghost stories that I've experienced over the years. A really quick one. I was working at a steel fabrication shop for like 25 years. Our regular start time was 7.30 a.m. And when overtime was scheduled, we would work to it prior to start time. We would go through periods when we'd work overtime for months on end. So much so, I wouldn't really need an alarm clock to wake up as my body was so used to it. Anyways, I was in the middle of this period of OT. Starting work at 4 a.m. till 4 p.m., Took me about 45, 50 minutes to get to work from my house. So I would wake up at 2.30 a.m., get dressed, pour a cup of coffee down my throat, get another one for the road to go. I live in a rural area, so there usually isn't anybody awake in my neighborhood at that time in the morning, except me. So I go out to my back door. My car, 2000 Honda Civic, was about 15 feet slightly to my right of the back door. There's a woman sitting in the back seat. Stopped dead in my tracks, just watched her. She looked to be white or Hispanic, long dark hair and pale, in that lighting anyway. Just sitting there. 
She was sitting in the back seat on the left side, behind the driver's seat, not looking at me. I don't think she noticed me at all, and I'm just paralyzed. She was looking out the left hand of the window, looking at somebody who was riding in a car on a not-so-exciting drive. After probably a minute or two, her gaze drifted to the front windshield, still not at me. She just sort of melted back into the seat and the shadows disappeared. I told my wife later that day and she just looked at me like, yeah, sure. And yeah, it was dark out at that time of day, but same people are sound asleep. But nope, I wasn't dreaming or half asleep. My adrenaline was pumping as soon as her presence registered in my brain. My heart was pounding. I approached the car, shining my flashlight over the interior. No one there. My Haunted House Let me just preface this story and say that I've always witnessed and experienced strange supernatural things since I was little, currently a 27-year-old female. I was much more open to it when I was younger, and I can tune in or tune out, but I have myself distanced at this time. The experience below was one of the most profound supernatural experiences I've ever had, and something I still think about. Back in and around 2010, my family relocated and moved to a home in Arizona. At the time of this story, I'm about 14. The home was built in the 80s with some sort of strange floor plan and had only one previous owner. From what the neighbors told us, an elderly couple had lived here. The wife passed a few years before, and the husband lived there alone after that. The neighbors said as he got older, he was going a little senile digging holes in the yard and coming up with strange projects like putting out globs of rock and cement into the yard. He was moved to an old folks home, passed away shortly after. That's when my family moved in. Right off the bat, I felt that home had strange energy. As I mentioned, it had a strange floor plan. The dining room was in the center, sort of walled off into a circle. When he walked to the front door, my parents' room was to the right, then continuing around the circle, You'd be in the living room, then kitchen. Then you'd be facing the office, and to your right there was a wing that went down the hallway to my room and my brother's room. From above the house looked like a lollipop. Hope that helps visualize it better. Well, we started renovations pretty quickly after moving in. Painting, cleaning, ripping things out in the backyard. Found a large human tooth in the bathroom drawer one day. Weird and gross. But I've heard about spiritual ties to human teeth, so I wanted to throw that in there. For some reason, whenever I think about this house, I always think of that tooth. While living in this house, I always had the feeling of being watched. There were strange noises and eerie feeling, and when walking around the circle, I always felt like something was right behind me. We all felt sort of creeped out in the home, but nothing serious had ever really happened until one night. I remember waking up in the middle of the night and I heard someone in boots run in the house. It sounded like they were doing laps around the circular dining room. Thought this was odd, sat up in bed, slept with my door open, and across the hall I could see my brother in his sleeping room. My parents slept with talk radio on every night, every night. Strange, I know, but I could hear the radio on the other side of my house and could hear my dad snoring. These footsteps sounded heavy. Didn't think it could be from my mom. Mentally, I was ruling out that it was anyone in my family making this noise. The stomping continued, and I was getting concerned. My dog typically slept in the office on the couch. I thought to myself, if he starts barking, then I'll get worried. Right after thinking that, I hear the footsteps run to the office. Papers start rustling around. My dog starts growling and barking. The paper stops, my dog stops, and it's quiet for a moment thought that it was over, till I hear the footsteps running down the hallway toward my room. I'm absolutely frozen, believing that I'm about to be met with either a spirit or an intruder. My door is to the left of me, open. As the footsteps come closer and get louder, they suddenly stop right before where my doorway starts. Sat there frozen, waiting for someone to peer their head around the corner or something. But nothing it was silent after that. 
This whole scenario lasted maybe three minutes. The next morning, I confronted my mom. I asked her if she'd been running around the house in boots. She told me, nope, I must have just been dreaming. She told me that her and her dad were in the room all night. Her and my dad. I started to maybe think I had imagined it. A week later, she told me she wanted to talk. She didn't want to scare me at the time, but told me that that night she had heard it too. The footsteps, my dog barking, the papers rustling. She said that she was about to get up and check, also worried that it was an intruder, but had come to a stop. All doors were locked that night. Nothing was stolen or left ajar. We lived in an extremely safe town. Both her and I believe it was a spirit, likely the old man who lived in the house before us. We continue to feel watched, could feel a strange passive-aggressive presence, but never experienced something to this capacity again. We still talk about this experience from time to time, and I'm glad I wasn't the only one who was awake in my house that night to hear it. A few years later, we had moved out, and a strangely a friend of mine had moved in. When I found out he'd lived in that house, I asked him if he felt a strange presence or even had anything happen to him there. His dad and him both looked at me wide-eyed and told me that, yes, they felt it too. Haunted Gymnasium When I was 17, I worked at a gym as a coach to teach kids gymnastics. I won't disclose the location because it was a local gym, but it was huge and had several different areas. A movie theater, a big pool, indoor for swimming lessons, and a karate studio, etc. The entire place was run by teenagers my age and a little older. Needless to say, it was a madhouse every shift, in the best way. It's probably the most fun job I ever had. My manager was always stoned out of his mind. The owner was never there, so we didn't have to worry about getting in trouble, and we'd always fuck around after the close of the gym. Never got a bad feeling from this place. Maybe because I used to go there when I was younger for gymnastics. And even though I can't ever go back there, it still holds a special place in my heart. So weird things started happening in different increments. For instance, the first time something not necessarily scary but definitely eerie happened was during a stormy night. I know, cliche, but just follow me. We decided to close the gym early because of lighting. Lightning. There wasn't anywhere safe to put everybody, so all the kids and their parents left while me, my coworkers, and our manager began closing up for the night. Closing duties were pretty standard. Sweep the floor, pretend to sweep. Mop the floor, make it look wet. Check security cameras, we never did. What can I say? We were young and didn't care. We all went to different sections around the gym, and keep in mind, this place is big. I was in the back room of the swimming pool, where I got a call on the radio from my manager. He said for all of us to go into the office to seek shelter. There is a tornado near us. So we did. And of course, we didn't care. We were laughing and yelling and throwing things at each other. It was all just careless fun. Then we heard a deafening sound, like a chandelier shattering. We thought either somebody broke in, or lightning struck right next to us. We went to look, and turns out one of the beam lights from above came crashing down, breaking into a million pieces. We didn't think anything of it. It's an old building. The only scary thing is having to clean up the mess and tell the owner about it, so we did. Then we heard knocking on the windows. This place was full of windows, so we didn't know where it was coming from, but checked it out anyways. Couldn't find anything, not a single person, and we kept hearing a loud knocking on the windows. This was when we all collectively said, Nope. We booked it out as fast as we could, didn't even bother turning the lights off. I contemplated quitting, but realized that this was probably just some teenager fucking with us. So the next day I showed up for work again. This time, it was even weirder. We did the usual sweep, mop, bullshit, clean place, we began closing up for the night. All of a sudden, our manager came by, saying he can't find the store key. 
We helped him look for hours. Couldn't find it anywhere. He said we can't leave until we find the key, or else it was his ass that would get blamed. Around an hour or so later, my coworker called us all back and said, with an annoyed look, that it was on his desk the whole time. My manager swore up and down it wasn't there before, and that something or someone must have been messing with him. Surprisingly, at least for horror story standards, we all believed him. So, we once again booked it out of there as fast as we could, but it wasn't over. Right when we drove away, all the fucking lights began to flicker. We were terrified out of our minds, but my manager toughened up, braved the place. We all decided to go with him. I swear on my life, dead ass no bullshit, we saw a little girl. We all saw her. She was wearing a pink dress, Mary Jane's, and her hair was tied in a ponytail with a ribbon. I know, I know. This sounds corny as hell. But we all saw her and probably will never forget her. We didn't say a word. We looked at each other. And, say it with me, we booked it out of there as fast as we could. We all quit the next day, never stepping foot inside that gym again. Strange happenings in my kitchen. I've had a few strange things happen in my kitchen within the last three to four months. Things I can't explain. I haven't been scared at all, which is odd. The first thing that happened, I had the microwave on. I had a few seconds left. It stopped and the door opened by itself. I still had time left to open the door. One has to tug hard on the handle. My electric Breville coffee machine has gone off three times by itself. The last is weird. I was opening a bottle of wine, and as if something hit the bottle out of my hands, put the bottle down and left the kitchen. These could all possibly be random weird occurrences. But they're all in my small kitchen, and I have no good scientific explanation for them. Laying on the couch right now, typing this, looking into my kitchen doorway at night, wondering if it's just random or if it's something that was interacting with me. It was watching me. Over ten years ago, I was home from college and sleeping in my room that my mom had made up for me. It was a newish apartment. My mother was renting it. My mom had fallen asleep on the couch. I was half asleep in bed and felt like someone was watching me. I was so tired I told myself I was imagining it and stopped being ridiculous. I was laying on my left side and it felt like something or someone was watching me from the right side of the bed behind me. Figured I would just turn around and see nothing's there and go back to bed. I turned around and opened my eyes and to this day I see absolutely vividly a tall, disheveled older man looking down at me with the most hateful of eyes. His arms were at his side, and he was just staring at me with a vile expression on his face. He had short, sandy hair. He looked corpse-like. He was wearing an ill-fitting loose suit. He had some cuts on his face. His eyes were cold and evil, and I felt unsafe and in imminent danger. I started screaming bloody murder and bolted out of bed, ran to the other side of the house and woke up my mom. She said I was probably dreaming. I said, Mom, I was awake. I felt it looking at me for a while and he had this gnawing feeling. I wanted to disprove it. I must have laid there a good few minutes not feeling like I wanted to open my eyes, but I couldn't sleep. So, I turned around. We crept back into the room and no one was there. Well... Me as an adult spent a good three days sleeping with my mom and then never had a good night's sleep ever again in that room. To this day, I question the experience. Full body apparition seen floating in our room last night. Kind of blown away right now after just having a conversation with my wife. 
Last night she saw a floating woman figure in a flowing gown, her robes above her bed and looking out toward the window. We live in a mobile home. It was bought new and given to her. There's nothing weird about the trailer park where it's located, as far as I know. No one has ever died in the home, and we have zero other paranormal things that happen. Like nothing goes missing, no doors slam, no footsteps, no voices. But we've now both seen this floating figure. The first time was around three years ago. My dad had just died in a car accident with his longtime girlfriend. At the time, I saw twice or three times a floating woman figure above my bed upon waking, which would quickly vanish. I chalked it up to like a combination of sleep paralysis and the trauma of the loss. At the time, I thought it looked an awful lot like my pop's dead girlfriend. I didn't really care for her. Not sure why she'd be visiting me. But anyhow, it scared the balls out of me at the time, but I rationalized it away. A couple years later, I found out that my wife had experienced a similar thing around the same time. We started discussing it, because our young daughter, maybe six months at the time, would wake up screaming sometimes. She would appear to be fixated on the ceiling of the room. Paranormal came up, and that's how we wound up sharing our stories with each other. Both of us are pretty rational, so I just chalked it up to sleep state or something similar. Anyway, after finding out that we had both seen the same thing, my wife said that she wanted to get rid of this antique cabinet that she'd inherited from her deceased mother in case there was something attached to it. It had been bought at an antique store, so we give the thing to her sister. She later found out that her own daughter was waking up with night terrors talking about a lady or something following receiving the cabinet. But we had no more unusual behavior from our daughter. Given this thing away, so we probably forgot about it. Oh. We also burned some sage around the same, around the same time for good measure after we got rid of it. Then last night my daughter wakes up screaming, like straight terrified, inconsolable. She's two and a half now. My wife and I take turns putting her back down. If she wakes up, it was her turn. So she goes to put her to sleep and my daughter's prone, being curled up tight in a ball. My wife tried to pick her up, but she didn't want to move or uncurl. So she laid down next to her and glanced up toward the ceiling and saw the woman floating vertically facing toward her window. She couldn't see a face. She thought, oh, there's that thing again. So she closed her eyes, tried not to freak out for her daughter's sake. My daughter refused to look up or turn over when my wife laid down. She just buried her head into my wife's armpit, kept saying something about the fan. Maybe the ceiling fan wouldn't really calm down. Eventually, I went in to help calm her daughter, which we eventually successfully did. She went back to sleep. While my wife was putting her back down, she texted me something about seeing a ghost, which I don't see until later. And when I do see the text, I kind of missed it trick a light or something. We only just now talked about the extent of it. Kind of blown away. No sleep paralysis or drug use or any other reasonable explanation. She says she saw it plain as day. When I saw mine, it looked very clear to me. The best way I can describe it is like a scene from Ghostbusters of a floating ghost, but more transparent and ugly. Now I'm thinking my own experiences were real too. All the crazy things that happened at my house. So I live with my boyfriend, my eight-year-old son, my boyfriend's uncle, and myself. So it's just the four of us. We had little things going on all the time. One time the vacuum cleaner was just sitting there like it always does. It's not in use. And all of a sudden it just fell over and hit a glass door of a cabinet with enough force to shatter the glass. I was standing in the same room and literally watched as it happened. Also, things go missing constantly, then would turn up hours or even days later in a super obvious spot like right out in the open where there's no way that we could have missed seeing it before. This happens regularly. All kinds of random things in the house too. Literally makes me go crazy sometimes. There's also the shadows. 
We have shadows that you can see even in a dark room. Like the lights are off and the room is almost completely dark, but there will be this human-shaped area that's just way darker than the darkness around it. It's scary to be laying in bed watching the shadow of a person walk across the wall. There's no light sources to make a shadow. There's multiple shadow entities, because I've seen more than one at a time. I'll also occasionally glimpse them in the daytime moving around, but they tend to stay in the darker areas of the room, like the shadowy corner. Maybe being in the shadows makes them feel like they can't be seen or something, but I can definitely see what looks to be a super dark shadow on the top of regular shadows that are there. Plus, they move when all the regular shadows just stay still. Then there's the back bedroom where my boyfriend's uncle sleeps. It's one bedroom at the far end of the trailer all by itself down a hallway where my washer and dryer are. If you're in the living room, you can look straight through to the kitchen down the hallway and see the bedroom door at the far end of the hallway. So if the door is open, you can see straight into the bedroom all the way from the living room. Mom, my grandma was over that day and she was standing in the kitchen cooking. But that side of the kitchen was hidden by a partial living room wall, so I couldn't see her standing there. I looked down the hallway and saw what looked to be her standing in the uncle's bedroom just facing the bed and staring. So, knowing Grandma's in the early strange stage of dementia, I was wondering what she was doing in Uncle's room, so I started to walk that way. As soon as I get past the kitchen wall, I can see the whole kitchen and I see Grandma standing there at the stove. I looked back down the hallway and the person, or whatever it was, wasn't there anymore. Uncle's also woken up to see shadows in his room staring at him as well as some friends who stayed in that room before Uncle moved in. They actually stayed for a couple of weeks. Didn't see anything at first. Then one night the girl woke up with a horrible feeling and saw a person standing by the bed watching her. She freaked out and went under the covers. When she came back out, the person was gone. All she could say was that it was an older lady. The guy staying with her in the bedroom didn't see anything that night, but he did say that he didn't like sleeping in that room because it gave him a bad feeling. He didn't end up seeing something, but it scared him so bad he refused to talk about it. That's when he left. The girl left a few days after he did, saying she didn't really like sleeping alone in that bedroom. A couple of months later is when Uncle moved in. He said he's seen some weird shadows, but that so far really nothing bothered him. I've also slept in that room once and felt fine, so maybe it's only certain people. There's probably other things that happened around here that are missing, but I think this post is long enough already. So anyways, I'm pretty sure I share my home with not only living people, but at least one ghost and possibly shadow entities. Heard my first EVP last week. I'd started hanging out with a new friend who I'd begun to really click with, with a heck of a lot of different interests and topics, similar humor, and was just a really nice person. Well, one day we're hanging in his basement, just kicking it, when we get on the topic of unexplainable happenings in the paranormal, to which I've always been a huge, logical fan of. He asks me if I know of or believe in EVPs which I replied, of course. He looks at me with the most dead serious look straight in my eyes and goes, you can believe me if you want, but I guess I understand if you think this is just some bullshit. As he pulls out his phone and brings up an 18 second long video of mostly darkness, but just a smidge of the night sky and the moon, where he gives me a heads up for his reason for recording that night, it was to have a recording of the wolves in the distance howling thought it was cool. Fast forward to later in the same night that he recorded it. He remembers it and puts in headphones as he's laying in bed listening to the video for the first time. He gives me the phone and turns the volume all the way up and says, listen to the first 10 seconds. Tell me if you hear anything. Needless to say, about seven seconds in, you can clearly hear over the howling, two to three heavy breaths, and then a low male voice saying something along the lines of, He's your friend here, or something like, I'm your friend here. 
I wish I had gotten him to send me the MP4 of it. If anyone's interested, I'll definitely try to reach out to him to get it and post it on here. It was hella cool seeing how much I've never encountered anything like that. Paranormal Entity Moved into an apartment with my wife six months ago. There's been a progressive amount of events that have taken place. We're not really sure what it could be. For some background, I'm agnostic. My wife practices witchcraft. My wife has a hidden altar that looks like a small closet built into the wall. I'll look at it later. Since moving in there, it's always been this odd energy in the air. Notably, our cats were terrified for weeks. Maybe not odd. Cats hate change and usually take a while to adopt to a new language. Adapt. The odd part is that they would just sit at the door and stare into the darkness for hours. To this day, they're not comfortable and relaxed unless me and my partner are in the same room. Then it started happening. Me and my wife at different times started to see a humanoid shadow. It would usually be standing in the doorways or the archway into the kitchen. I have insomnia as well. Sometimes I get out of bed and go into my office as to not disturb my wife. She's told me that several times she's woken up and still felt that someone was in the bed, only to find out that I wasn't there. Thought this was a little crazy until it happened to me. I woke up and felt like my wife was curled up behind me. I believe she was still in bed. Even rolled over to kiss them, only to find the bed empty. Can't express how strongly I felt that my wife was present that night. She was in the office after not being able to sleep. Then one night we're laying in bed. At the end of the bed, the springs pop and sound like somebody either stepped onto the bed or sat up from the bed. Mind you, the bed is a hybrid and very new, so I don't believe it was a matter of a spring getting stuck. Another night we're watching a movie with the door open. The cats are laying down with us in the office. In the corner of my eye, I see a shadow moving quickly toward the bathroom and out of view. Odd. Maybe it was just me seeing things. Look back at my wife and she's pale. She asks me if I was okay because I looked pale as well. Then proceeded to tell me that they saw a shadowy figure standing in front of her altar, then quickly moving toward the bathroom. I admitted to her that I'd seen the same. We were both spooked, had to leave the apartment and get out for a bit. When we returned, things were calm. Later in the week, I used the restroom, washed my hands, closed the door, and as I walked toward my room, the bathroom door made the opening sound and creaked open. Quickly got back into bed and went to sleep. Since this, me and my partner continued to see the bathroom door open and close. We've heard loud crashes and bangs when our cats are sitting in the same room with us. This apartment is older and was built in the early 70s. Even though my wife is a witch and practices witchcraft, they haven't practiced for several months. Could this be someone that died? Something angry at my wife's altar? Or maybe something else? It doesn't seem dangerous yet, and for the most part we ignored it and tried not to give it attention. It's also odd to me that it seems to always be in doorways. Unexpected Verbal Interactions For context, I'm an engineer by education and profession and have always been a bit of a skeptic with regard to paranormal experiences. However, my wife is very interested in the topic and much less of a skeptic. She said that there have been a few things that I and we have experienced which I can't explain. The most dramatic slash hard to explain thing happened when we went on a walking ghost tour in St. Augustine, Florida in September of 2022. A month or two before going on this trip and the tour, she had gotten a Reiki massage followed by a tarot card reading. During said massage, the masseuse commented that my wife was surrounded by an unusually high amount of energy. Subsequently, during the tarot card reading, she told my wife that she had or has a guardian angel following her daily to protect her, and that this angel was the Archangel Michael. I just took it in all with a grain of salt and didn't really think much further about it, to be honest. So, 
on this walking ghost tour. My wife is wheelchair bound, by the way. It was just the tour guide, another couple, and ourselves. We were perhaps midway through the tour and were all in a narrow alleyway while the tour guide told us about the history of this particular alley, when the event I can't explain occurred. The tour guide had provided us all with various detection devices, and at this point we all had EMF meters. At first they were all basically silent, but a little while after the guide begins retelling the history of this alley, the EMF my wife was holding became very very active, pegging the gauge multiple times. However, the EMF I was holding while standing more or less right next to her was silent. Likewise, the guide's EMF detector was also silent. The other couple kind of had wandered off a bit but came back to where we were at this point and their EMFs were also silent while my wife's continued to single the presence of an EMF field near us. We then sort of began testing, found our EMFs would go off too if we got particularly close to my wife and then silence again if we moved away even a foot or two. At this point, the tour guide, who is now using a spirit box sort of device, which I see as sort of a detuned AM radio, had just been static noise up to this point. They asked, Is there somebody here with us? And pretty quickly all we heard was the word yes. Then it came back to static sounds. All five of us did in fact hear it, Note here that at this point no mention had been made about her Reiki experience or Michael to her guardian angel. No one present other than she and I knew that story at this point, so after getting the yes response on the spirit box, the tour guide asks if the entity that responded as being present could tell us its name. Then the static stopped and all five of us clearly heard the word Michael. Color me really, really surprised. Actually, shocked might be a more accurate description. After this occurred, she shared her story from the Reiki experience with the group, and a few moments afterwards, the tour guide asked the entity, Michael, are you here to protect her? A moment later, all five of us clearly heard the word yes from the spirit box. Honestly, I was flabbergasted. Really don't know what to make of that experience, or whether it was something that one of us somehow manifested, or... Really what? But there was no way anybody else in that group knew about her guardian angel Michael experience. How did it happen? I have no idea really, but I do know that it happened. Ask Reddit I was stationed in Osan, AB in South Korea, in 07 and 08. This wasn't me, but a friend of mine. Back then, during exercises, it was common for those of us in the QRVs, quick response vehicles, to hide in a local HAS, a hardened aircraft shelter, during simulated attacks. It was common knowledge that there was one HAS on Bravo Diamond that did not or rather that you did not hide in. When I asked him why, he said that they broke that rule once because they couldn't find another HAS that was empty. So they squirreled themselves away and during the next missile attack, they shut the doors and sealed themselves inside. Apparently during the entire 90 minute attack and post attack recon, they heard creepy noises from random shuffling to voices. He swore he heard someone very clearly say, please no. The generally accepted cause for this was something like an urban legend. Apparently during the Korean War, the pilots left the maintainers behind in the airbase that was about to get overrun. When captured by the North Koreans, they were tortured and hung by their necks with safety wire, and their spirits still supposedly inhabited that hangar. Ask Reddit. Twenty years ago, I was at a small army camp just outside Uijongbu, South Korea, the city north of Seoul, but south enough of the DMZ that I figured we'd have some heads up if the north attacked. At least time enough to jump in the Humvee and do whatever the plan was. One night I was on the airfield, a 
instead of the usual skyline I was used to seeing 15 miles away, all I saw was an orange glow, as if the city was consumed by fire. I remember seeing pillars of smoke and flashes of light. I thought there were explosions in and around the city. I honestly truly thought the North Koreans were invading. I thought the city was burning. I ran back into the office and told the shift supervisor that Ui Zhuang Bu was being attacked. I started going down the list of things that we had to do and wondering if the Humvee had fuel and stuff like that that I was supposed to be in charge of. And just generally freaking out, but trying to stay focused on what I was supposed to do, like what we were trained for. Well, the supervisor asked me to go outside with her and show her what I was talking about, but of course we'd go out and nothing. The night is dark and starry with clear skies, and the city lights are still there off in the distance. Thought I was going crazy, wasn't on drugs and the shifts were overnight, but not long enough that I was, like, sleep deprived. I was in the groove of working mids. The environment was tense, but I loved Korea and had a good time there in my off time. I wasn't obsessed with war or anything like that. I wasn't a mental case who had hallucinations. I know what I saw wasn't fog or haze obscuring the city. Ask Reddit I've had a few different experiences, but the weirdest that comes to the top of my mind is a few incidents at a friend's house. He lived in a very large Edwardian house. It was in rural England, on account of having two brothers and three sisters. Kind of looked like a mini mansion, quite idyllic. We would sit in the basement playing video games all day and occasionally go out for a spliff. When the family were out quite often, we would hear what sounded like small children running down the stairs in the hall above us. Like exactly the same sound as when his brothers and sisters were in and around playing the house like lunatics. The first few times we assumed it might be the dogs, even though it sounded like multiple bipedal footfall. So went up to check. Nope, two of the dogs were locked outside playing in the garden. The third was asleep on the top floor. This really freaked us out. Combination of how real, audible, and unexplainable the situation was with a little dash of ganja-induced paranoia. Eventually, after a while, we just got used to it and tried to avoid going upstairs so no one was home, but just happened most times I was there over a span of seven years, give or take, before they moved out. The other weird experience in his house was when I used to sleep in the basement when I stayed over. His brother's room was in the basement, so I'd pinch his bed if he was out. It was quite comfortable and cozy. The only problem with it was, is a hole in the ceiling above your head where presumably a furnace pipe had been previously. This hole led straight through the dining room, which had terracotta tiles on the floor, and a large wooden table and chairs. In the night, and only after everybody else was in bed, I would hear the chairs being dragged around above me. This terrified me. With the hole, I felt like it was too close for comfort. Like whatever it was in there could see me, but I couldn't see it. Especially when I plucked up the courage to investigate and found all the chairs neatly round a table as they always were. And trust me, I ran up that basement stairwell just to make sure my friend wasn't fucking with me. Nothing, no one. Needless to say, I avoided sleeping there at all when possible and stuck with my highly uncomfortable fold-out sofa bed in the other part of the cellar. My friend definitely heard the running noises, but none of the family heard the chairs scraping the floor. The only things they noticed were things disappearing for long stretches of time and then miraculously turning up in plain sight. Keys and wallets, etc. But in a house of six kids, things get borrowed all the time. Ask Reddit. When I was a kid, we used to cover up all of our notebooks before school year began and place stickers with our names, standards, and subjects on them. So what happened was, is when I was around seven or eight, my mom brought home this roll of cover paper and those stickers and told me to get done with the covering by myself. She was helping me for all those years when the school began, and she thought it was about time I started doing it myself. 
And what I was doing instead of placing those newly acquired rainbow colored stickers all over the house. <sighs> on the bathroom door, on the floor, on the wall, everywhere. So my mom, being the responsible parent she is, takes them away and hides them someplace. I start crying, but she says that she doesn't tell. I go to bed crying in the mid of noon, and in my sleep I dream that I'm out of my body and floating. I move from one room to another looking for stickers she hid from me, and I see them lying over on a high shelf, high by the standards of a seven-year-old. In the room above, I get up and look around for the chair and carry it all the way upstairs, climb on them and bam, there they are, lying on the top of the same shelf I dreamt of. It's one of the few memories I can so clearly remember of my childhood and it's still kind of unexplainable, at least to me. Ask Reddit Over winter break one year, I agreed to babysit my six-year-old niece. My sister and niece had moved into their house about six months earlier. They were settled in except that my niece repeatedly complained a dog kept her awake. The neighbor's dog barked constantly, and a ravine across the street caused echoes. My sister had to leave for work at 5.30 a.m., so as soon as she pulled out of the driveway, I grabbed a blanket curled up on the couch. I was just drifting off when I heard the steady click-click of dog nails on the kitchen floor. The noise moved through the kitchen, into the dining room, and into the living room where I was. Once in the living room, dog circled around the couch. I was half asleep and used to frequently babysit for a family with a dog that liked to roam around at night. So it took several seconds for me to realize that. One, my sister didn't own any pets, and two, the living room was fully carpeted. Once these two realizations hit, I sat straight up just as the clicking came directly in front of me. The instant I opened my eyes, the noise stopped and nothing was there. I realized there was no way a dog had slipped in the house, so I started to try to figure out the source. The furnace wasn't blowing, so nothing was being moved by the vents. No electronics were running. I vaguely knew about hypnagogic hallucinations, so I reasoned that maybe that's what happened. Eventually, I settled down and lay back on the couch, just drifting off again when the click 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 started back again. At that point, I gave up on sleeping and watched infomercials until my niece woke up. I mostly dismissed the noise. My brain was maybe overacting or something, but I remembered my niece's complaints about the neighbor's dog. Thought about it for a few days and then asked her if the dog's barking was still keeping her up. She calmly told me, It's not that dog barking. It's the one I hear walking around the house. Ghost dog is a bit far-fetched, but I have no idea what we both heard. Ask Reddit my story is from 2005, when I was a sophomore in college. Around Halloween, my friends and I were looking for a suitably spooky experience around the campus that we could take advantage of. This was in Bowling Green, Ohio. And an internet search told us the story of the Hallcomb Road. As the story went, a school bus full of children crashed in the 50s or 60s on the road and the bus driver and several children were killed. I was able to find a story in an old newspaper confirming the crash and mentioning the death of the bus driver, but nothing on the children. Our plans were to wait until Friday night after classes, take one vehicle to the site. However, my friends started bowing out early in the week, but I was still interested, knowing my mom and aunt were wanting to visit. I called them and explained the plan. The idea seemed fun to them, and my aunt even volunteered to bring her at the time state-of-the-art digital camera. We drove to Holcomb Road around 8.30 on a Friday night in October. Stories online gave various accounts of what you might see or hear, so we decided to simply park and walk the entire tree-shrouded length of the road. The experiences started almost immediately. 
We had parked at the very end of the lane and began walking the one-mile stretch of road. My aunt began snapping photos immediately, pointing the camera, shooting, and then moving the camera to take another picture. I heard it first, the slow crunch of footsteps on dry leaves. There were four of us, my mom, aunt, little brother, and myself. We were all walking on the asphalt surface of the road, nowhere near the leaves strewn across the forest floor. I pointed the sound out to the group and we stopped to listen more closely. Silence. I turned on my flashlight and swung it around the area. We saw nothing, thinking I had just imagined it. We continued walking. As soon as we did, I heard it again, the distinct shuffling and crunching of a human walking through dead leaves. This time, though, everyone heard it. We stopped moving and the sound ceased. Still snapping photos, we started walking again. Sure enough, the crunching followed us, sounding no more than five feet away. My brother and I took my flashlight, shined it across the road, wondering if perhaps the acoustics of the woods were making a squirrel or deer sound much louder and closer than it was. As we did, my aunt kept shooting her camera, my mom at her shoulder. Suddenly, they both screamed. My mom is unflappable. She is resolute and tough, stoic in the best way to kind of describe her. She was the most stoic of all of us. She was the most skeptical of the whole trip. Hearing her scream and seeing my aunt and her sprinting down the road, my brother and I didn't ask questions. We simply sprinted after them. Coming out of the woods, breathing heavily, I got the story from them as I was scanning the forest on the other side that my aunt took a photo and the flash illuminated a man standing not ten feet away. According to my mom and aunt, he was tall and wearing what appeared to be a bus driver uniform, similar to the one in this picture. I didn't see it, but I was eager to examine the photos. However, what we had neglected in our panic was to run in the direction of our car. We would have to traverse the woods again to reach it. My aunt and mom refused to go. They had seen something unexplainable, and they were shaking from fear and adrenaline. Bracing myself, I took the keys, sprinted through the woods, my flashlight casting a bobbing beam in front of me as I panicked. The movements were flying all over the place where I threw the flashlight in my hand. To this day, I swear I heard the sound of leaves crunching and the sound of breathing and whispered words as I ran. I made it to the car, drove through the woods way too quickly, picked up my family, drove back to my college. At my dorm, I'm sure we made a strange sight as we crowded around my PC and viewed the pictures on my aunt's memory card. In every one, there was a yellow light that stretched and bent in the frame. No matter where the photo was taken, the light remained. These pictures were taken on an abandoned country road with a foreign light source for miles. Nothing could have caused this. In the photo taken when my mom and aunt claimed to see the bus driver, all that can be seen is the yellow light across a blank white background. It's been 12 years. I've graduated college, gotten married, became a father, served in the army since then, but I still remember the lights of Holcomb Road. Greetings from Paranormal M, your portal to the uncharted. Delve into the unknown with us by subscribing and turning on notifications. Stay tuned for our latest spellbinding stories that'll challenge your perceptions. Enjoy the journey. Ask Reddit. I used to collect pocket watches. Many years ago, I bought a cheap but interesting one at a junk shop in Chinatown. It was of the variety that needed to be manually wound, which I consider to be an appealing trait. Upon purchasing the watch, I wound it up, and for the next day or so, I had a streak of monumentally good luck. 
Everything meant my way. A girl that I liked agreed to go on a date with me. A webcomic that I was running got 15,000 unique views. And the lottery ticket that I bought, purely on a whim, resulted in me getting something like $150. Clearly, it was the watch. I was tempted to keep using it, of course, but I don't want to wear out whatever charm that it had. As such, I stopped winding it and resolved to only take it out when I needed a little bit of random fortune. That was when everything went downhill. As soon as the watch stopped, my luck reversed entirely. I wound up in the emergency room on the day of my date. The webcomics artist quit. My car's back tire blew out on the highway, and the damage cost well over $150 to repair. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong, as though the debt of good luck that I'd incurred was being repaid with an incredibly steep amount of interest. Once again, I was sure that the watch was to blame. Needless to say, the implications were astounding. If I was willing to steel myself against a potential calamity, I could be assured of having exceptionally good luck whenever I wanted might even be able to use the bad luck to my advantage. Unfortunately, ha, things didn't work out that way in the slightest. Regardless of what I prepared myself to endure, the consequences of using the watch were always, without fail, of a nature that both completely undermined its own benevolence and left me off worse than before. Once, while hoping to hear back about a job to which I applied, I wound the watch. Within hours, I received a call from an enthusiastic hiring manager who immediately set me up with an interview. When the day of the interview came, which was not long after I had stopped winding the watch, the bus I was riding broke down. I had to take a very expensive taxi ride to my destination, and upon arrival, I was told that the position had been filled. Since then, I've tried winding the wretched thing a handful of other times. I've always regretted it. The price in bad luck is never worth the brief increase in good fortune. Someone once recommended that I simply keep the watch wound indefinitely. But what happens if I forget one day? I shudder to think about what could occur if I went a week, a month, or even longer with nothing but good luck only to have the watch's hands grind to a halt. Perhaps my heart would stop with them. I'm not a superstitious man by nature. I can think of several rational explanations for why my luck appears to change when I use that watch. But that hasn't stopped me from wrapping it up in a paper towel and hiding it in the deepest recesses of my closet. My friend's mom had some spooky experiences in a house that they used to live in. One day she was laying in bed after her husband left for work. She didn't work at the time, so she slept a little later than he did before getting up to do stuff. She heard someone walking around the house and figured maybe he hadn't just left yet. A few minutes later she felt the sheets behind her rise as if someone was getting into bed with her. No one was there. She felt breath on her neck as whatever it was laid down next to her. She bolted out of the house and waited for her husband to come home before returning to the house. Months go by. She starts working. One day she comes home from work and found her hubby on the ground in the backyard. He told her he fell, but it turned out to be a brain aneurysm. He passed away not long after that. She was heartbroken. A couple of weeks later she got back to work after grieving the loss of the love of her life. She was talked to her co-worker and standing next to her printer with her computer in full view. Only her computer could print from that printer. The printer started printing something out. All the paper said was SSDD. Her husband had used to always say same shit different day. Guess he wanted to let her know that he was okay and still there for her. She hasn't dated since he passed away and raised their child my best friend, who was a wee baby at the time, on her own. A 
Ask Reddit. Years ago, I almost froze to death in a cabin. I was deep in the mountains, a little hut that was set up for long hikes like mine. At some point in the night, the wind threw open the door, and all the heat I had made with the furnace was now gone. I woke up so cold, I thought I couldn't move. I had a strangely calm feeling, and I was pretty sure I would just freeze to death. I even had some weird vivid vision of the next hikers walking in to find my blue corpse. After what felt like an hour of going in and out of consciousness, I started feeling really warm, and the night suddenly became as illuminated as day. The door flapping the wind gave me a short glimpse of this tall, slender, glowing figure with long hair standing in the snow. I had an undying urge to get up and talk to them, so I got out of my sleeping bag and without throwing in my external layers I walked out into the blizzard, looked up at this glowing woman. She was taller than anyone could be, and she just looked down at me, smiling. I walked around the woods with her for a while, then made it back to the cabin and fell asleep. I think it was all a dream or a hallucination, but in the morning, the furnace was burning wood. Wood had been chopped in front of the cabin, and a fire had been started. Haunted for two years in a house. I'm just trying to get input from others. I've had a lot of experiences off and on in my life, but my experiences weren't things that built up and became more, well, malicious. They relatively stayed consistent in how they showed themselves. I rented an apartment upstairs in an old house. I noticed that the closet in my room constantly reeked of curry. It never went away, and it was noticeable even before I moved in. My kids were too scared to sleep in their room because the closet different closet in their room, which was a long, narrow closet that went into the living room and opened up on the other side. There was an instance that I was playing hide-and-seek with the kids. The game goes on for like ten minutes. I think I hear one of my kids hiding by their room, like I hear movement. I jump out and I say, boo, and all the kids' toys in their room light up and make sounds. Scared me more, too, because my kid wasn't over there at all. Nobody was. Another time I was in my bedroom with the door cracked. There's a linoleum floor, a little hallway in the front of it, and it's also next to the kids' room. I'm hearing walking on it, it sounds like pacing back and forth. The way it sounded was like those old penny loafer business shoes. Finally I go out and open the door thinking it was my partner. It wasn't them, there was nobody there. I had a shelf above my kitchen stove to hold my spices and stuff. Just small things. You could see the kitchen from the living room. It was a small place. Instead of stuff falling down like it usually does with gravity, it projected straight across, violently. It would fly straight across horizontally and hit the wall across from it. It happened so frequently that even guests started seeing it happen. I was in my bedroom. My partner was asking me about having intimacy in the dark. I declined. Nothing to that, I thought. Fast forward, and during a tornado, siren going off, were all in that long closet I mentioned before, the one that connects to the living room and the kids' room. My partner was behind the door facing the living room, and I was on the side facing the kids' room. When the tornado stuff went away and the siren stopped, he asked me, Did you write this? I asked what he meant. He didn't want to tell me, because he said it would be inappropriate, and the kids were there. So he shows me, well, what had been behind the door, which I probably never saw because I used that closet for storage. Had it huge items, boxes, furniture in there. Nobody could fit in or walk in there without taking everything out. Nobody went in there. It said, Do you want to have sex in the dark? But the letters were all askew, and they trailed downward toward the floor. 
At the time, my kids were too young to be able to write this as well, so... Not that they would anyway. They don't talk like that. After that, I was absolutely terrified. My kids slept with me in my bed after that. We could hear something moving underneath it, and we could feel it moving. It was weird to me because there were boxes and stuff under there, but I figured it could be a cat and tried to reassure the kids. The bedroom door had been closed, mind you, so any pets that would run out of there I'd know. So I turn on the light, look and move everything. There's nothing there. I lied to my kids that it was a cat. Can't sleep. I feel like something's watching me from the bedroom closet. A message from the other side. This is a true story that spans 30 years. Back in the early 90s, I was just starting high school. At the time, I had a long-term girlfriend named Kara, but she attended a different high school in a different city, about 20 miles north of where I lived. Kara and I had our typical evening routine. We would talk on the phone for about an hour, talking about her day, making plans, or talking about the latest episode of Beverly Hills 90210. Typical high school shit. We were two typical teens that were in love, talking about our future plans as if we were going to be together forever. Sometimes we would discuss her drill team schedule and the upcoming competitions that I would attend with her. Kara was on the drill team for her school, and they would compete regionally with other schools in the surrounding districts. I was still teaching myself how to edit audio, and I would often make her mixtapes that her team could create routines with. That shit was a pain in the ass, too. I didn't have a computer capable of doing any of the editing. I was literally teaching myself how to physically splice physical tape using audio cassettes. I became damn good at it. My family didn't own a cordless phone at the time. Instead, we had a, well, you know, those wall-mounted touch-button phones with the 800-foot coiled phone cord. It would constantly get tangled up by itself, you know that one? This usually meant that I was in the kitchen where the phone was mounted when Kara and I were having one of our evening phone sessions. One night as Kara and I were discussing her upcoming drill team competition, my mom started calling out for me from the living room. I walked from the kitchen into the living room, still talking to Kara, when the local newscast came on. My mom told me to keep watching as she saw something very alarming on the news. It was the top story that evening. A young girl's body was just found just outside her high school that same morning. I remember being on the phone with Kara and watching the news as they covered it. It was December 14th, 1991. The name of the girl whose body was found was named Sarah Yarborough. She was on the drill team for her school. Apparently, she had gone to the school early that morning and planned to meet with the rest of her team to prepare for the local drill team competition, a competition that my girlfriend Kara and her team were scheduled to compete at. Her body was found partially clothed and was unfortunately sexually assaulted and strangled. Now, if the similarities weren't already kind of freaky, the moment they showed a photo of Sarah on the news, chills ran down my spine. Sarah had curly, fiery red hair. So did Kara. In fact, they even shared similar facial features. I immediately told Kara to turn on her TV to watch the news with me. But we both thoroughly got creeped the fuck out. I'm pretty scared right now. So I'll start out by saying, I think there's a spirit or something talking to me. No, I'm not trying to sound crazy or anything, but at my house, we have a shed in the woods where I work on my lawnmower. It's just stuff. It has lights and everything. So anyways, tonight I went up there to just hang around. I had a flashlight with me. When I got in the shed, I went in and closed the door, still using the flashlight. Keep in mind, it was like 10.30 and the shed is pretty far in the woods. I went to turn on the light switch and it didn't come on. So I was just like, whatever, I'll go check and see what's wrong. 
But then my flashlight started flashing really fast and crazy. And a few seconds after doing that, it started flashing slowly. Like staying on for two seconds, staying off for two seconds. So I was a little creeped out, so I walked outside the shed about ten feet or so. It started working perfectly fine again. Weird, right? Now this is where it gets really interesting. After I got the power back on in the shed I was in, I was still a little creeped out by, but I went to walk back down to the house, turned around to the shed, and while pointing a flashlight at it, I said, If anything's out there, make my flashlight flash two times. I waited a few seconds. Nothing happened. So I said, Yeah, that's what I thought. Turned back toward the house and started walking, and I'm not kidding, the flashlight flashed two times, nice and slow. And so, yeah, I sped it up on the way back down. But I'm actually being serious, and the flashlight had never done anything like that before. Nothing since then. But even for a while, every time I'm at that shed and it's dark out, I always feel like something is watching me every time I turn my back. I just feel like something's in there. So do you guys think I should get one of those boards where you talk to ghosts or what? But I'm very interested, but I'm also a little worried. An entity is imitating my mom, and it hates me. Now I want to preface this story by stating that I'm a very analytical person. I'm a technical business analyst, for God's sake. So my livelihood is to analyze and find reasoning behind every situation. So it's to the point where I can't deny that something is living in my family home, and it imitates my mom. I live in Queensland, Australia. In about 2004, we moved into a very old Queenslander home. You can Google Queenslander home, and you'll see the type of house I'm talking about. It was a big fixer-upper, with very high ceilings and a beautiful deck that caught the summer breeze perfectly. It was the first house built in the entire street over 150 years ago. It used to be a celery farm. And I might know. About 15 years ago, my cousin was sleeping over one night. We were very close. She told me about all of her paranormal experiences. For context, she grew up in Indonesia, and her mother was apparently into black magic. So she's seen and experienced a lot of the paranormal. There anything in my house? I asked her. Yep, she replied. She sits on the windowsill of your mom's room. Is it bad? I asked. Not too sure if I wanted to actually hear the news. Just don't bother it, she said, shutting down the conversation. Fast forward a few years. I'm sitting on my bed studying with the door open. I then see my mom walk down the hallway with the washing basket, about to put on a load of laundry. About five seconds later, I see her walk down the hallway with the washing basket, going to the same direction she was before. I was baffled. How could she walk the same direction twice? I tried to shake it off, thinking it was just my tired mind playing tricks on me. After all, I was studying and it was late. About a year passes, I'd forgotten the spooky incident of my mom walking in the same direction twice. It was a Friday afternoon and I had my best friend over. We were hanging out in the kitchen talking to my mom. Mom was cooking dinner. Me and my friend were just chatting away. But my brother then appears from his room. Where's dinner? He asked. Still another 30 minutes away, Mom replies. Don't believe in ghosts, but I might soon. Don't really know where to start, but here goes. We recently moved house. Been looking for years. And this place was actually a fair price. Yet it needed some redecorating. The previous people smoked inside, but nothing major. So, bargain, right? Well, it started by hearing footsteps upstairs. My hubby and I joked about it being haunted and put it down to the neighbors. Maybe it just sounds like it's above our heads, when in reality it's just next door in their house upstairs. So this goes on for months and becomes the norm. Well, next door went away a few days ago. 
but the footsteps continue. Summertime rolls around. Good few months ago. I'm the type of person who feels the heat. Usually I get the hands on, excuse me, I'll get the fans full blast. Well, not in this house, it's constantly cool. I even needed a jumper on the summer. Another odd thing is the smell of toast. At night, we randomly smell toast. This happens around once a week. After a while, I googled it and apparently could mean that there's an electrical fault or dust in pipes. So we get the plumber and electrician round. Family friend. Everything checks out. We also smelt one up near the hallway at night. Also, while I was finishing cleaning, I found a small card for a hotel on my sofa. I'd literally just tidy. There is no way I would have missed it. So I take a photo, send it to my husband. He responded to me and said he'd take a look into it. Came back five minutes later and said it's a Spanish hotel that was demolished ten years ago. So we're stumped on that one. A few weeks ago, Hubby and I are watching TV in bed. He goes to the toilet, comes back to bed looking pale. I ask what's wrong. He lets out a deep breath and says, Something ran at me. I ask what he meant. He said, I came out of the toilet and in the corner of my eye it looked like a figure ran at me. This place is fucking haunted. He doesn't believe in ghosts either, so hearing him say that sent chills down my spine. But we put it down to eyes playing tricks, illusions, light trickery. Anything but ghosts, basically. Last week my children come screaming down the stairs with a look of pure terror on their faces. They're eight and six. My eight-year-old says someone was knocking on the door. Where's dad? Dad was at the shops. And the door unlocked itself. I calm them down and ask them to show me what they mean. So we all head upstairs. My eight-year-old demonstrates and shows me the lock. I suggested that maybe it wasn't locked properly. And maybe the knocking was a rat in the loft. I don't know what else to suggest at this point. I almost forgot about this one. A few months ago, I was sitting in bed, and I heard creaking behind me on the top of the stairs. You know when someone's deliberately making a floorboard squeak by moving to pressure from one leg to the other? <coughs> for about 40 seconds, it was constantly squeaking. My children like to play a spy game, so assumed it was one of them. I smiled and said, I know you're there. The squeaking ceased, but I get no response. So I get up to go talk with them. They're not there, they're downstairs. We're still in contact with the people who used to live here. Sometimes we'll get each other's posts, so one of us will drop it off in the other. They're friendly enough, and often we'll have a small chat. Well, I jokingly said, Don't suppose you had any strange happenings while you were there, like not being haunted or anything. I started laughing. Her face dropped, and she said, No, of course not. Anyway, I got the pot on the stove, better make sure it's not boiling over, take care. And shut the door abruptly. More information. We have a dog who hates everyone apart from us. He's not bothered by the house. Thought animals were supposed to be more in tune with paranormal stuff. It's just weird at this point, half my brain is screaming ghosts, the other half thinks there must be a logical explanation. I don't know anymore. Nightmare that's supposed to mean something. So it's currently 2.30 a.m. I was awoken by something bothering. To start off the dream, it was like 1 a.m. if I remember. I went down to get some water fell asleep on the couch a few moments later. Woke up and there were no lights on at all. Tried opening up some lights. They weren't working. So I opened my flashlight. It was very dim for some reason, so I rushed upstairs into the room I was staying with and got sleep. A few minutes later, I was woken up with my heart racing, decided to go down again to check if the lights opened, to check if they were just faulty. Still nope. Still faulty. Do note this is still the dream, and I woke up in a dream. So I decided to play with the lights upstairs and some of them working, so I turned off the lights downstairs, 
working or not, decided to go upstairs to investigate. Some lights were working and some weren't. My flashlight was still very dim, so I turned them off and my dad woke up, went down, went to the core, drink water. While I was waiting for him to come up, my mom suddenly went out of the room and was walking toward me. I hurried, walking into my room without looking back. While I was closing the door, she caught up and wouldn't let me get close to it. She was forcing herself, as if she wasn't my mom at all, or something pretending to be my mom. I noticed because my mom doesn't enter my room unless she really needs to. Then I found out she wasn't my mom. Directly told the woman she's not my mom, she went full psychotic. She barged into the door and transformed into this entity-like thing, who's somewhat after me and wants to hurt me. For some reason, I saw like comments of teenage girls, kind of like flashing before my eyes type, saying stuff like, she's so me. Me and her are the same. So real. I hate men. Stuff like that. There was a name, but I forgot. When I woke up, my heart was racing. I got nothing on that one. House in the Woods I will start by saying that this happened in summer of 2000. Kind of long story. My friends, J.F. and J.D. for short, and I grew up in our small town in Ohio. We frequented the woods behind our home and would play games like hide and seek or catch the flag very often with the neighborhood kids. Needless to say, we all knew the woods like the back of our hands. One day while bored, J.F. and I just started to go hiking in the woods. We did this all the time back then, mind you. About 30 minutes into the hike, we stumbled upon an area with eight perfectly lined up pine trees with a small white house hidden behind them. We had never seen these trees or house before in this area, so we were thoroughly confused. We could see no trails or driveways leading to the property, so we had no clue how this house could have been built out in the middle of the woods. The house, from all outward appearances, seemed to be in good condition for the most part, and it was mostly unassuming. We both started getting an uneasy feeling, decided to turn back and leave the area and head back home. Go to a couple weeks later. I'm over at my friend JD's house to play some PS2. At some point we start talking about the woods and he tells me about a little white house he came across in the woods. He goes into detail about the same rows of pine trees and how he got a creepy feeling when he got close to the house and he split. I then told him how J.F. and I stumbled upon the same house a couple of weeks earlier and got the same feeling. Later that weekend, all three of us decided to go back to the woods, go explore this house. We spent a good four to six hours combing those woods, couldn't find the house or the row of pine trees again. They weren't just missing, there was no trace that the house or trees were ever even there. To this day, all three of us get the heebie-jeebies when we all recall that summer in the mysterious house in the woods. Me and my family think there's something in our house. We live here over five years, but about a year we had some feelings that this place has something. First, my sister said she's hearing footsteps in the room. In the kitchen, we said, maybe comes from somewhere else, and we didn't take it serious. Months pass, and my father started hearing it, too. There would be nobody home when he would hear it. We didn't really care about it at first, but it got worse. At this point, even me heard it. <laughs> I was asleep in the living room and woke up. Nobody was home, but I heard footsteps in the kitchen and room. I was so sure that someone is home, I started yelling, Dad, is that you? No answers, so I got worried. Went to the room, but there was no one there. My sister sometimes even come out of this room and ask if we did call her name, and says she heard somebody called her name clearly. This happened more than a few times. One time I was smoking and left the butt on my desk. Went to get some water, then came back, sit in my chair after a few minutes. I looked at my shirt, and the cigarette butt was on my shirt. Had no idea how it ended there. 
There was no way for it to just lay on my belly. All of this wasn't serious to me, but tonight I got scared shitless. I was trying to sleep in this room and was about to fall asleep. Started feeling a goddamn hand on the side, and then got scared immediately. I wasn't awake or asleep, but I feel something behind me was sleeping on my side. Tried to talk, but I got sleep paralysis, so stayed like this for a few seconds. When paralysis was gone, I just yelled my sister's name. Took me a few seconds to realize everyone was asleep, and was thinking what the fuck just happened. To be clear, I get sleep paralysis a lot, so it wasn't about this. I'm thinking I wasn't awake enough to process to feel a hand on me, and when did I get sleep paralysis right after that? And when I felt the hand, I immediately thought of these things my family was talking about. What should I do? Don't really have any idea about this. Maybe I shouldn't be talking about this. I feel like something is attached to me. In the past few years, I've experienced some odd things. In 2020, I was frantically searching for my deceased grandmother's rosary. I'm not religious, but it was incredibly special to her, therefore special to me. I looked everywhere, nothing. Days later, it was sitting on my coffee table out in the open. Again, I'm not religious. I wasn't using it. Why did it appear in such an obvious place? It felt eerie. In 2021, I lost a bottle of very important prescription medication that I take. I searched up and down under the bed all around for days and days. Showed up five days later, and you guessed it, the coffee table. This time it felt mischievous, like the joke was on me somehow. This year I woke up and was definitely fully 100% awake. My husband wasn't in bed. I felt the weight of a human being sit down on the bed next to me. I was facing the opposite direction. I felt immediately like it was not my husband. I could hear him distinctly in the kitchen, but its presence was warm and loving. Additionally, every cat I've owned and have been attached to has seen things. Every time I've gone to, like a psychic of some sort, they always tell me they sense or see an older male presence with me. It's always an older male, which makes me think of my paternal grandpa. His last words were, My dear sweet Natalie, my name, so I guess that made sense. He passed when I was 11, so I don't remember much about him. I don't know if it's him at all or anything. I've just been told this bullshit, maybe. Anyway, these aren't the first instances or my experiences with the paranormal, just the most recent that I remember in detail. I often feel or sense things, like energy, but I'm not very educated in details. Are these all separate entities or just one? Is it a ghost, a spirit, or a spirit guide? Most importantly, is it good? My gut says yes, but should I be entertaining the idea of keeping it around? Photos and video disappearing altered. So my wife and I were on a weekend holiday, staying at a nice hotel known for its Christmas decorations. We were watching the carolers. My wife was emotional as I was taking a video of the scene behind the carolers, swinging around to record the carolers from behind. When I stepped up to join my wife in the small crowd, a caroler was embracing my wife, whispered in her ear to calm her. My wife had taken some pictures prior to this. When we went to look at the pictures, every one she had taken was distorted, just a green screen or pixelated. It was the only one of the pictures that she took of them. Keep in mind that a caroler was embracing my wife as I went back to join her in a small crowd of seven to ten people. We immediately watched the video I'd taken to see if it was distorted like her photos. They weren't, but what we saw was even stranger. When I turned to record the carolers from behind, no one but my wife and the carolers were in the picture. The one lady was not embracing her. They were apparently singing just to her. We studied the video. There were no shadows of people, as if there were an illusion of the crowd standing in a way that 
or blocked by the singers. They simply weren't there. Again, the woman was embracing my wife when I joined her. I know I had to walk around some people to get to her, too. Possible Sleep Paralysis as a Child Hat Man When I was a child, I refused to sleep by myself. When I did, I'd always end up screaming and crying for mommy or daddy. I remember very vividly on several occasions not remembering going to sleep, but waking up to my entire room being black and red. Yeah, like in the movie Insidious, you know how this sounds. But I would wake up and see what I can only describe as a hat man figure standing either in front of my window or in the corner of my room next to my closet. I had several encounters with this. I would run and climb to my parents' bed, tuck myself under the covers, and he would stand and stare at me in the hall. Sometimes I ran to my parents' room and tried to wake him up, but no one would wake up. Other times they would wake up and just tuck me in bed. I didn't talk about what scared me, though. I would just tell them that I'm scared. Until one night it got really creepy. I don't remember falling asleep. It's storming out. Everything is red and black. I'm terrified. I run to my parents' bed and cuddle up between them. And I shit you not, this hat man figure stood in the doorway, whistling some weird tune. Couldn't wake either of my parents up to save my life. So I hid under the blanket. After I hide under the blanket, the whistling stops. I wait a second to peek my head back out. This figure was standing over my parents' king-size bed, looking down at me. Hat off, staring at me. I couldn't see any eyes, just pits of black, and I could make out weird grooves and bumps on his face and head. No hair. I don't know. Hat Man visited me a lot as a kid, and I had times where I would wake up on the floor of my bedroom after encountering him, losing consciousness. That's the best way I can describe it. Everything after seeing him would just be gone, and I'd wake up on my bedroom floor instead of on the top bunk of my bunk bed. This happened up until 5th or 6th grade. Something's beating me up when I get into sleep paralysis. This started when I was in high school. The typical sleep paralysis to me starts with me feeling terrified. The feeling like something electric and ticklish at the lumbar part of my back. Then the tickling sensation spreads and boom, sleep paralysis. I also remember I died by suffocation by my thick blanket. I can't fucking move. Anyway, that experience pushed me into learning how to get in and out of sleep paralysis. I sleep on my stomach. Scary image, feel the scared feeling really electric on my back. And to get out, a friend told me to move my toe. Other thing that works for me too is placing my knuckles on my neck. Just little movements, and I can feel my real body again. So that goes on for, I don't know, years. And all of that, I can't see anything. And there's always something beating me up like kicking and punching my back and neck and head. There's no pain. I can only feel the ticklish electric feeling. And I always try to shout and talk to those things. but never got a response. My ability to force sleep paralysis is lost after 18 or 19. But I still get sleep paralysis very, very rarely. When I sleep late and I sleep on my stomach. To this day, I'm still craving for that feeling. I still want to find a way to communicate to those things. Friend I had over summer might have been imaginary. When I was 11, we moved to California near the Yosemite area. Lots of forest and small lakes where I lived. I moved right around when summer was ending and school was starting. So I took a bit to get settled and get used to everything. Summer rolled around the next year. My family's pushing me to get out of the house and do something besides staying inside and playing games all day. 
There was a lake with lots of dirt paths and such that was easy to explore, so I'd go around there a bit, just walk around. Especially this one spot that had a cool little waterfall to a smaller lake from the bigger lake of that area. Well, one of these days I'm walking to the lake, and I spot someone by the waterfall. She's a girl around my age, orange hair, freckles, and an accent I wasn't really able to understand at the time, which I think was a Tennessee accent. I've always been horrible with names, but I remember her name being a very common one, something like Alice or Casey or something like that. As a young kid, I never really had crushes on girls. Most of the time, if it was a friends or someone, them being a guy or girl didn't change much of how I interacted with them. And she was definitely the same way, because we immediately got along. I remember us going to the lake and just walking around a lot. We talked a lot about living in Washington, what school was like and video games, something I could tell went right over her head. She said she was visiting her grandma over the summer at a house down the road from mine. I remember I had her number saved, so I'd text her whenever I was planning to go on a walk. She'd meet me at the end of the driveway of the house that she was at. I remember her saying her grandma didn't want her going to my place, which was understandable. I'm a stranger to this woman, and so would my family. But Alice didn't want me to come and visit the grandma either, which I remember feeling weird. I remember my friend Eric, who lived near the lake that would come by, wanted to come with me to walk around. Alice told me that she'd rather just be the two of us. Maybe it was because she didn't know him, but she would only come with me on these walks alone. I remember one time we walked out a bit further than usual, on one of these dirt paths I was telling you before. This one was a bit awkward because of a kind of a high incline on this hill. She'd have to pull me up for us to walk around and jump down when we walked back. Well, cut to near the end of summer, she's still hanging out with me, even meeting me on the end of my driveway. I remember one time I was having trouble finding my jeans, so I didn't get cut in the bushes. And we walked past and told my mom before she went to work to tell Alice that I was going to be a little bit late. I'll explain in a bit why this is important. On our last day walking around, we went to the rock that kind of overlooked the lake that we just kind of sat at. I remember she was talking about her family and how she much preferred being there in California than where she was from. Something I don't remember if she ever told me specifically or not. Well, I said bye to her, and said I'd try to meet her at her house before she took off. I never did. I think I was forced to go to school, or school shopping that day. So I sent her a text telling her she didn't seem upset, though. I don't know if I just never checked in with her, or if I'd forgotten her, but it never saved her contact an old flip phone my parents had given me at the time when I was so young, and they didn't have good texting or calling plans at that time. Cut to a good while later, like 2021. A lot of drama's happening in my family, which I won't go into, but topics about my childhood and how I was treated or being brought up. I asked my mom about that year being forced to go outside more, and if that was her decision or my father's. Spoiler, it was my father's. I brought up how it wasn't bad, though, and that I had Alice to hang out with. That sparked a bit of nostalgic happiness I hadn't felt in a while, thanks to how bad that in the previous year was for us. Well, my mom dropped would tell me something that I would continue to think back on over and over again. That imaginary girl you walk around the lake with? I immediately thought she was fucking with me, but she looked serious and thought that the time I asked her to tell Alice I was going to take a while, that I was talking about an imaginary friend, because she claimed she never saw anyone when she went down the driveway. I know I had interacted with this girl, I know I had gone with her to this lake many times, but I never ever thought about how I was the only person who ever saw her. Never my friend Eric or his brother who sometimes went to the lake with me, not my family, not even met her grandma can't confirm if I'd even had this girl's number, or if I'd even ever texted her. It threw me off a good bit, but then I remembered one thing that made me know I was right and she was real. One time in July when I was walking with Alice to the lake, my grandma had stopped to give me a soda while she was heading to the house to give Dad something. Well, when I had next talked to Grandma, I'd brought it up. Didn't know what I was talking about. Not until I brought up Alice. Oh yeah, I remember. Your dad always brought it up how you and some girl would walk around the lake. 
and I thought it was cute. Weird that he thought it was a real girl and not one of your imaginary friends. This shit still rocks me to the core. There's no fucking way that I imagined all this. I still have no idea what she could mean by one of your imaginary friends. If I ever found that old phone, if I'd even still have it in a box somewhere, I'm getting to the bottom of this. She has to be real. Otherwise, who the fuck else have I been imagining this whole time? Saw a spirit of a girl who died long before. What's some of your freakiest experiences? Around 12 years ago, I had a friend whose house was very old and unfortunately full of items at the moment due to reasons. We would hang out there frequently. His mom would let us green out. What's that? And after this event, it turned out many of us had experienced paranormal encounters. One day, while I was helping move some stuff around the house, I'd walked through his kitchen and out the front door. Upon looking to the left while walking through the kitchen to the back porch, I'd noticed this apparition blacker than anything I've ever seen, in the shape of a little girl. It freaked me out so bad I had to sit outside for a bit, and I was going that way when I saw her. I also fainted in this kitchen some time after, while not under the influence of anything, and I was healthy at the time as well. The fainting was due to the vibe of the room suddenly feeling extremely heavy. I hadn't felt sick or anything before or after this fainting. But anyway, I had waited about a week or two to mention it to him, and turns out, at the same point in the history of this house, a girl had died in a cellar directly above where I had seen her. For some reason, it was a closed-off room, but it had a small hole coming from that room all the way to the main part of his basement, about 40 feet east that was probably a one-by-one -one square pattern. He even showed me this hole and shining a light down it, surely enough, and you could see all the way down toward where I saw the apparition. To this day, when I'm thinking about it, I can still vividly remember seeing it, Turns out the house has a long history to it, even has one piece of giant Freemason's table in his attic that the house was built around. It even has those Indian windows in the attic as well. I've always wondered about seeing that girl and why I fainted in the kitchen not long after. It's as if a spirit was trying to possess or reach out to me in some way. It's how it felt before I fainted. I've never fainted before or after in my life, except once due to drugs. That was ten years later. I always felt uneasy in that house. There was another instance where we were in a room on the second floor, laying on a bed. I could feel what felt like someone licking my forehead. Anyway, I've always loved paranormal stuff, and hope more happens to me in my lifetime. I just thought I'd share a crazy experience I had in the past. <laughs> 